Pacific Park on a beautiful Northern California evening. A perfect night for football. A sellout crowd, 65,000 on hand for the battle at the top of the National Football Conference the San Francisco 49ers and the New York Giants. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford. Happy you're with us. We think we have a great matchup for you tonight. The Giants coming in with a 9-2 record. Of course, the 49ers also 9-2. And, and the team that wins tonight will go two games up in their division and only four games remain of the regular season and they'll have a long leg up for home field advantage in the playoffs. If the Giants win tonight, they will go two up on the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that they will meet Sunday in the Meadowlands, and a team that they have lost to three times. They would dearly love to take a two-game edge over the Eagles into next Sunday's game. Meanwhile, the San Francisco 49ers are looking to the south. They don't feel they have this division locked up because they know the Los Angeles Rams are coming on. They were the winners in overtime last night of a comeback victory over the New Orleans Saints, and they know now the Rams are hot. They'll meet them on December the 11th in a game we will also bring you. But if they win tonight, there'll be two games up on the Rams. And incidentally, the Rams, I'm sure, are looking on tonight. But we will also, as I said, bring you that game December the 11th. And I know, Al, that the 49ers would love to take a two-game edge against Atlanta next week and then go into Los Angeles and play them two games up. Well, Frank, the 49ers have been an incredibly resilient team. Of course, everybody knows Bill Walsh is gone. George Seifert is here. They have barely missed a beat. They've been able to withstand a lot of injuries. I think you all know Jeff Fuller is gone for the season. Michael Carter is still out, the great nose tackle. And offensively, Joe Montana's missed two and a half games and didn't practice much this week because of sore ribs. Jerry Rice didn't practice much this week because of sore ribs. They are without doubt the key components in the 49er attack. And you might say the 49ers last week against Green Bay beat themselves because they turned the ball over four times. They suffered six sacks and 10 penalties, several of those were key, as Green Bay won at 21 to 17, and a lot of the 49ers now admit they were looking ahead to this game tonight against the New York Giants. Biggest game of the regular season, Dan, the Giants come in like the 49ers, nine and two. What do you think of the Giants at this point? Well, obviously they're a darn good team at nine and two, but I don't know that they're the equal to San Francisco 49ers talent-wise, but yet you've gotta love this Giants squad because they win and they win the old-fashioned way. They do indeed earn it. They do it by running the football. They run the ball more times than any other team in the league. And when you talk to the Giants, you get the impression that they don't think they can win tonight's game doing so. They know they've got to open it up. So look for the wide receivers and especially tight end Zeke Moa to play a big part in the, in the Giant offense tonight. Ron Earhart, their offensive coordinator, says, we will spread the field. Okay, defensively, how do you attack Joe Montana and the 49ers? Very simply, you cannot pressure him from the corners. You must come right up the middle. Look for Lawrence Taylor, the game's premier defensive player, to attack Montana between the guards tonight. And we'll find out about Taylor right away because the Giants will be on the field defensively after the kickoff. As the 49ers win the toss, they will receive. And with Raul Allegre on the injured reserve list, Bjorn Nitmo, who was born and raised in Sweden and then was an exchange student, went to high school in Alabama, to college at Appalachian State in Boone, North Carolina, signed by the Giants. And he is their kicker for the second week. And he puts it in the air, and it bounces into the end zone for a touchback. So not particularly artistic, but it gets the job done, and the 49ers will start at the 20-yard line. Now, statistically, Joe Montana is having the best season of his career, and that is really saying something. And look at that completion percentage. 70.4 and also the key figure there 9.10 yards per attempt the league average is 7.2 Craig and Rathman the running backs Taylor and Rice the great wide outs and Brent Jones the tight end and there is the offensive line Harris McIntyre Sapolo Kali and Barton from the 20 yard line the first play of the game is Roger Craig getting only to the 21 and the 49er running attack this season has not been nearly as proficient as in years past so craig has picked it up of late washington howard and marshall the front three for the giants banks reasons cooks and lt the linebackers and the secondary really coming into its own collins having a fine season with williams guyton the rookie out of eastern kentucky and the veteran canard are the safety Second and nine from the 21. 
Fakes to Rathman. Montana has time. Then shoots it out to Rathman, who is their leading receiver, and he takes it to the 38-yard line. They love to go to the fullback. That's his 57th catch of the season. And a first down, a 17-yard gain. But it was also Benny J Joe Montana. Chased out of the pocket. He stepped up. He's looking deep at this point. Now he steps up, pulls it down as he spots Rathman and picks off Ratman, who gets the first down. Rathman with more receptions than any other running back in the league this year. From the 38-yard line, after the game's initial first down, this is Craig again behind Rathman, but Marshall slows him down, and then Williams and Pepper Johnson come in to finish him off out at the 39-yard line after a short game. Well, there's a guy really coming on strong, especially when the Giants need him at this stage of the season, is Leonard Marshall. Got eight and a half sacks on the year so far. Had a sack for a safety in their game with Seattle last week. And there's Leonard, number 70, fighting off the block, not giving an inch off the line of scrimmage, and then coming in making the play on Roger Craig. They need the dominating play on the line of Leonard Marshall to be successful tonight. The New York Giants do. They need that too, Dan. And they also say, and they'll tell you, and there's Bill Belichick, the defensive coordinator, we can't let them get the ball out to Taylor and Rice and let them make big runs with it. We can't let them throw to Rathman and Craig and let them run with the ball. Second and nine, the play fake, the pump, and then going deep, and there is Jerry Rice, and he is finally tackled at the 24-yard line. Again, vintage Montana. The run fake, the pump, and there's Rice for a 37-yard gain and a first down at the Giant 24-yard line. Well, how often do you see a Frank with that pump fake? Uh, one thing about a pump fake, it takes tremendous it. pass protection at the line of scrimmage because the quarterback has got to hold the ball for a long time. And look how long Montana has. And that time the Redskins secondary, Sheldon White, number 39, the giant defender closest to Rice, just totally mesmerized by Montana in that pump. First and 10 at the 24-yard line. Craig in motion, so everybody out into the pattern. And Craig makes the catch and goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Run out by Myron Guyton after a gain of seven. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but we've seen this before. We were here just a couple of weeks ago, and this is exactly the way the 49ers opened up a game against the New Orleans Saints. I mean, just precision offensively. And they'll never show you the same play, or very seldom the same play, in the first quarter and a half of play. They were given the offensive team last night 15, 16 plays that they were going to run almost no matter what. So you won't see the same thing twice in this opening drive. Walls and Jones in a double tight end setup. Second down and six from the 20. Montana over the middle. That's the tight end Brent Jones. That's a 49ers. From inside their 20s, lead the league in touchdowns, long drives. The Giants, meanwhile, have not given up a point this season on their opponent's first drive. Four different receivers already in this drive. Now your head is spinning if you're out there defensively. The thing you want to do is try to shut the 49ers down early in the game if you can because they come out and they always give you these high percentage plays, they break a tackle, they get the good yardage out of throwing underneath. And again, a different look here with a double slot. They send Jones in motion on first down from the 11-yard line. Jones makes the catch and takes it to the five, and a saving tackle is made by Lawrence Taylor at the five-yard line. Boy, and that's exactly where the San Francisco 49ers would like to see Lawrence Taylor being forced into pass coverage. This time he's locked up man-on-man -man with Brent Jones. Nothing more than a simple five-yard out by Jones and LT. A little late to react, a little late getting there, and has to make a tackle around the ankles, or you're right, that is a 49er touchdown. And there it is, the Giants, as we mentioned, the only team that has not allowed a touchdown on the opponent's first drive of the game this season. In fact, they haven't allowed a point. On second and four, it's Trey getting to the four-yard line. And again, it's Taylor making the tackle. It's going to be third down and a short three. Reasons also went on the play. A point to be made here, guys. Uh, there's been a lot of wet weather here in the Bay Area, and they've had to resod a lot of the field. And so far, I've seen a couple of Giants go down. That time, Terry Kennard slipped when he's trying to make a tackle. Pepper Johnson slipped a couple of plays ago, making uh, a cut on some pass protection. There's a good look at how some of the sod is coming loose. The 49ers appear to be adjusting better to the loose traction. Field clumping as it did last week. Third and a short three. Montana on a roll and a fake. Chase 
and then throws. Touchdown by Taylor. A great catch in the end zone. Whoa, boy. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. 80 yards, and they didn't use one play twice. Montana rolling out. He does that so well. Rolling to his right. Over the years, we've seen him complete that so many times. You get the feeling Walsh left the playbook on Seifert's desk, don't you? Seemingly nothing has changed. Let's take a look at him. He sprints to the right. And you know that he can pull this thing down and run with it if he has to. And there is a slip in the end zone, Mark Collins, but nevertheless, Taylor comes down and puts the Niners on the board. Mike Colford developing into one of the best kickers in the league. Barry Helton holds. The extra point is good. That's the 15th time this season the 49ers have driven 80 or more yards for a touchdown, by far the most in the National Football League, and it takes them five minutes and 14 seconds to do it. So a brilliant beginning for Seifert's 49ers at Candlestick Park. They lead the Giants 7 to nothing. At Transamerica Pyramid in the center of your shot right there on a crystal clear night. It is just gorgeous. Temperature in the upper 50s. And Candlestick Park, uh, as it has been for every game since the middle of the 1981 season, filled to capacity. From the end zone now, a look at the 49er touchdown. Well, I want you to watch closely. Number 25, Mark Collins. He'll be at the upper right part of your screen. He slips and falls. In fact, you'll actually see a hunk of sod that has come up right there, right in the, into your picture. Look at Collins already down on the ground in no position to make a play on John Taylor. Three times in that first drive, we saw giant defenders slip and fall, and that time, the slip cost them a touchdown. It's the 49ers that appear to know how loose this sod is, keeping their feet underneath them, better able to maintain an upright position. Colfer's kick fielded at the three by the brilliant rookie Dave Meggett out of Towson State, and he gets it back out to the 18-yard line. And he is tackled there by... The ebullient Bill Romanowski. So Meggett, for the moment, coming off the field, but Bill Parcells is saying that he is going to use Meggett on a lot of first down plays tonight in a change for the Giants. As you look at Bill Sims and his numbers, and again, he hurt his ankle in the Monday night game against Minnesota, and missed the whole Phoenix game in his back, Anderson and Carson. The running back, Turner and Manuel, the wideouts. Mo at the tight end with Bavaro on injured reserve. And a huge giant front. From the 18-yard line, Sims goes right to the air, and it is Howard Cross who drops the ball. Now, he's the rookie out of Alabama who caught a touchdown pass against Seattle last year. And again, with Bavaro injured, we see Moat and Cross taking over a tight end. Defensively for the 49ers, Holt, Kugler, and we'll also see a lot of Jim Burdett nose tackle with Fagan. Then you've got Haley, the pass rush specialist, Millen, the former Raider, Michael Walter, and Tina Turner back. He was hurt. And the secondary, Pollard and Griffin, the corners, Brooks and Ronnie Lott, the safety. Second and ten from the 18-yard line. And with Meggett in the backfield, it is Moat who makes the catch, drops the ball, but recovers it himself at the 28-yard line. The difference there might be, since uh, the ball was alive, it could have cost him the first down when it squirted out. Giants looking for a big game for Moat tonight. They know with the 49ers defense that they can free up the tight end, usually lock him into a linebacker as they do right here. Tina Turner is there trying to cover Zeke Moat. Now, that was a Bavaro who, of course, is the IR, and you can see it did come out. It would be a different story, but the 49ers feel that they can stay with Moat and Howard Cross with a linebacker. Third down and a long one. From the 27-yard line and plowing ahead goes Maurice Carthen, and that's a role that he handles so capably. Short yardage specialist takes it out just past the 30-yard line. And Phil Sims uh, trying some protection on that ankle in the last couple of weeks, but uh, he's not going with that tonight. He said it was encumbering him. But it was actually bothering his knee a great deal. I asked him how it felt. He said, well, I'll worry about it at the end of the season. It's going to bother me the rest of the year. First and ten, a new set here for the Giants with Meggett on first down to stole back. Luchon split to the right. It's Meggett on a draw, taking it out to the 33-yard line. If you follow the Giants, you know that Otis Anderson has been their featured back this season. 
but he, uh, at least statistically, is wearing down a little bit. Lewis Tillman has been spelling him, and tonight in a new wrinkle, it's Megan. Megan Deadly out of the backfield. He has 23 receptions this year, the little rookie from Towson State. He's only 5'7", 180, but he's averaging over 15 yards on each of those receptions. Second and seven from the 33. Under shot. pressure, he sacked at the 26-yard line by Bill Romanowski, who just made that play on the kickoff. So two big plays for Romanowski. Well, there's the linebacker's dream. Unblocked, unaccounted for, to the blind side of the quarterback. I mean, that's, that's as easy as this game of football gets for a linebacker. You are totally unblocked. Here's Romanowski. Watch the blitz from the backside and observe that no one in a white jersey even looks at it. And Phil Sims, being a right-handed quarterback, never sees him until he already wraps him up. A flaw in the pass protection scheme of the Giants. Third and 14, the 49ers show blitz, but back off, rush four, Sims under pressure anyway, has to step up and fire, and the catch is made by Odessa Turner, and he fights for a first down. Across the 40, he is stopped by Pollard and Lott, and they needed 14 and get 15. The Cowboys visited Washington in the 1983 season opener to take on the defending Super Bowl champions. But a John Riggins touchdown and three field goals by Mark Mosley gave the Skins a 16-3 lead as halftime approached. The ball was at the Cowboys' 41 yard history. In 1985, the Bears were 12-0 and looking to equal the feat of the 1972 Dolphins, the only team in NFL history to go undefeated through both the regular season and the playoffs. On Monday night, December the 2nd, the Bears went to Miami to face a different group of... But even in defeat, there was a silver lining for the Bears. It came as Walter Payton reached triple figures in rushing yardage for the Chicago 24. It turned out to be the only blemish on the Bears' record as they finished the season 15-1 and and won the Super Bowl. Okay, now to enter your boats, just call one night... ...inside as we look at it, had a clearer shot. After further review... Play stand. So it's a touchdown. It's the ninth of the season for Anderson, and now Nitmo to try to tie it. Well, this ought to give us our definitive look at it right here. Of course, trying to find Otis Anderson in the hmm. jumble of red shirts. There's the ball. And Nitmo boots it through, so the personal foul. Gives the Giants an opportunity to penetrate. That's the longest drive of the season against the 49ers. 221 to go in the quarter as New York answers San Francisco. San Francisco, we play 12 minutes and 39 seconds. The Goodyear Blunt Columbia, piloted by Charles Russell, providing the spectacular shots tonight. Eagle Stick Park with. The 49ers, oddly, have lost their only two games of the season. They are 6-0 on the road, 1-0 at Stanford, and 2-2 two and two at Candlestick. Bitmo's kick is a much shorter kick this time at the 9-yard line. Spencer Whoa. Tillman, up the middle, he comes, gets by Rusan, cuts to the outside, gets by Nitmo, into giant territory, and finally run out of bounds by Perry Williams, and a flag goes down. Perry Williams goes ahead and runs Spencer Tillman way out of bounds. And that's going to tack another 15 yards onto this already impressive return. And you got to give Bjorn Nitmo First some credit. Foul unnecessary roughness. Late hit out of bounds, number 23. 15 yards. First down. You've got to give some credit here to Nitmo because he's going to force Tillman back towards the sidelines. And that's the only way that Williams is able. Well, right there, Nitmo forces Tillman to the sidelines, and that allows Perry Williams to come over. But watch him follow through. Out of bounds, and then that shove, and knocking Tillman around is what draws another 15. Impressive blocking up front, though, by the 49ers and their special teams. Well, Tillman, mm. look at Tillman. He's actually got the yeah. face mask of Perry Williams. Well, that kind of explains mm -hmm. Williams and his response. Mm -hmm. But very well a bit offsetting. 
Yeah, Tillman got away with one that time. His left hand clearly had a hold of the face mask to Perry Williams. The old adage was true. They always see the second one. 60-yard run back plus 15. First down at the 16-yard line. Game tied. That much time left in the quarter. Montana, great protection, and nobody is there. And uh, one of the rare times you'll see miscommunication between Montana and Rice. There's Craig. Rice was the man who had stopped at the five-yard line. Jerry Rice just took it down and did a turn in. He read the defense differently than Montana, obviously. He turns in right here, and Montana at that point has already released the ball and figuring that Rice was going to make the out, which he didn't. And as you said, Al, they don't do that very often. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're wondering in regard to that penalty, that is a non-reviewable play, that face mask situation that we just saw on the run back. It's a judgment call, and that's mm -hmm. not subject to review. Craig in motion, second and ten. Montana, quick toss over the middle to Jones, who almost broke it. He takes it to the four-yard line, and a saving tackle is made there by Myron Guyton. You know, the Giants come with a blitz from the outside. Lawrence Taylor comes from the outside, but the quick set, the quick release of Joe Montana and the very short pattern just dumping off to the tight end is just removing LT from the game so far. Blitzes from the outside by this guy are really not going to have a great deal of effect against this 49er in their short passing game. Just a three-step and a release. He's hard to reach. Rice and Taylor both set up on the right side. Split back formation from the four-yard line and Montana looks to the right side. There is Rice and he's in with a touchdown. Seven consecutive games for Jerry Rice. Fifteen touchdown receptions this season. In only one game this season has he not caught a touchdown pass. What an athlete he is, too. Now, this curve very easily, he could have been kept out of the end zone by Terry Kennard. He's strong, but Jerry Rice makes it look so fluid, so easy. And yet, nevertheless, he's a great athlete. What a brilliantly conceived pattern. Mm. Just outstanding. Gopher's extra point is good, and so far this game is very much living up to the pregame expectations. Terry Kennard is put in a position where he really has very little chance. Here's Rice here in the slot, but watch John Taylor drive upfield, and then Rice goes in behind him, and Kennard has to try to stay with him. Look at the break to the outside. Terry Kennard has to break underneath it, and that's almost impossible. How are you going to keep Rice from catching it? And then how do you keep him out of the end zone? A job nobody wants. And a little trivia for you. The Giants have not run a kickoff back for a touchdown since 1972, and that's a 1,000 kickoff returns. Rocky Thompson, wasn't he the guy that did the last one? He was the man. Opening day, 72. Number one draft pick. Didn't stick around very long. So long ago, the Lions were playing at Tiger Stadium. Lee Rusan runs back the kick from the five and gets banged down at the 22, and it's now 1,001 <laughs> kick returns. 108 to go. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. <laughs> yeah. 108 left in a wild opening quarter. Stay tuned. <laughs> no, they're on the edges of their seat. IBM presents You Make the Call. Bill Sims of the Giants loses the ball as he's hit preparing to pass against the Chicago Bears. The ball goes forward and contacts the ground. Now you make the call. Is this a fumble or an incomplete pass? Make. Because Sims did not have possession of the ball when his arms started forward, the resulting loose ball is considered a fumble. So does Anderson, and he breaks free for a first down. Out to the 37-yard line, he is tackled there by Matt Millen. So the first play on this drive for the Giants picks up first down number six for them, and that's a 14-yard pickup. That's really a capability of Otis Anderson, as you see his totals for the year. 19 receptions coming in, that's number 20. And, and really, stop and think about this. This is a guy that, when he was with the then St. Louis Cardinals, had a 70-plus reception year. So he's got skills coming out of the backfield. Utilized primarily as a runner, though, with New York. From the 37-yard line, Sims pressured, and down he goes at the 32. He is dragged down by Pierce Holt, who is developing into one of the fine defensive ends in the league, and that's six-and-a-half sacks 
for Holt this season. And you could give Haley an assist, the leading soccer for the 49ers, who can really put the pressure on a quarterback. Here is Holt coming from the inside to his outside comes Charles Haley that forces Sims to step up. And down goes Phil Sims. Yeah, Charles Haley coming from the far side is really the guy that, that caused it all to happen. It's Pierce Holt that ends up falling on it, but Charles Haley may have knocked down Phil Sims even if Holt doesn't get there in time. One of the premier pass rushers in the NFL, Charles Haley, adds to his total. Into the quarter, 14 to 7. 49ers and ABC's Monday Night Football returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. ABC's Monday Night Football. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And we're back at Candlestick Park and up in the blimp. Our guys up there sending best wishes to the Bay Area. You're coming back and aren't they ever and looking great. Spectacular shots from the Goodyear Blimp Columbia tonight. Second and 14 and Phil Sims under pressure again. Stepping up and running it out to the 39-yard line where Michael Walter makes the tackle about eight yards short of the first down. Kevin Fagan. Also in on the play, Michael Walter getting credit for the tackle, and there are the numbers through 15 minutes. Relatively even, I guess the only difference is the big kickoff return by Spencer Tillman, which gave the 49ers the opportunity to just have a short drive to a touchdown. Third and eight, the Giants come up with four receivers, and Roussan stays in the block, and then he goes into the pattern, and Sims fires to the 50, and Odessa Turner makes the catch. First down to the San Francisco 45-yard line, tackled by Pollard, and down on the ground is the Giants' William Roberts. Very slow in getting up, the big guard out of Ohio State. Appears to be all right. Simple pattern by the Giants. They lined up in the four wide receivers. They all went down, hooked up at about 9, 10 yards, just enough for a first down. And the man who came open the more quickly of the four wide receivers was Turner. Ryan Williams comes in as Roberts comes out. Williams, the number one draft choice of the Giants this season, the 300-pounder out of Minnesota. And there he is. That huge... Offensive front for the Giants, but it was it was funny the graphic they put up in the Ohio State Michigan game the other day. The, the Buckeyes and the Wolverines have bigger lines from the 45-yard line. Sims shoots it out to Anderson, and then he's taken down by Bill Romanowski at the 38-yard line after a gain of seven. When Phil Sims tonight, uh, at least so far here in the first half, extremely accurate throwing the football. Opened up the game with a dart to Howard Cross that he dropped, and from then on, every pass has been just like that, right between the numbers of his receivers. Brian Williams having to sub now at left guard. He's the guy that eventually you're going to look at as the guy targeted to center, and William Roberts has come back into the game. So Roberts only missing one play. Big number 66 back at left guard. Second and a short four with a double tight end set for New York. Cross goes in motion. And a flag goes down. And I think the play was whistled dead before its inception as Anderson is stopped. And we'll get the call from McElwee. Before the snap, no play. Five-yard penalty against New York. George Seifert in his first season. Uh, an assistant under Bill Walsh, of course, uh, for several years. Bill Parcells, hopeful of winding up in the Super Bowl for a second time. Let's take a look up front. They're calling William Roberts the left guard for moving early. He moves before the rest of the linemen, but I'm not so sure that he's not moving right with the football. He certainly moved with the center, Bart Oates. John Elliott, on his outside, did not move, and Roberts gets the call. Second and eight, New York at the San Francisco 43-yard line. 13.04 to play in the first half. 49ers on top, 14 to seven. Sims on the second and eight. 
Going deep for Manuel. He's covered well, and the pass is incomplete. Staying back there with him is Don Griffin. Lionel Manuel. Funny thing about Manuel, he, he and Sims through their careers have linked up for 21 touchdown pass receptions, and uh, none this year. Good coverage by Griffin. He gave Manuel the pop before he passed the five-yard marker, and Sims was uh, under a lot of pressure. He had to release it before Manuel could do anything after he broke away from Griffin. Emmanuel only has the one touchdown catch, and that was in our Minnesota game, and Jeff Hostetler threw it. Third down and eight. Niners show blitz, and here they come. Through the middle comes Lott, and the pass is errant, intended for Stephen Baker on the far side. So Ronnie Lott coming right up the middle, but Sims goes to the outside and not there, and it's fourth down. Well, that's an interesting technique that time by the 49ers. They come up and show the blitz. Ronnie Lott comes, but they still only bring four people because then they drop Charles Haley back into pass coverage. So you give the look of an all-out blitz, but really you're just bringing four people and dropping seven. And it'll definitely change the pattern as the quarterback Sims is reading with his receivers. They're reading blitz all the way and changing their pattern. And it was very effective. And the 49ers take a timeout not having the right people on the field they have to spend the time out here before the Giants get set to punt the biggest thing was for me was uh, being a Pittsburgh Steelers fan at that time uh, they had gone through some ups and downs and then finally see them having a lot of success on second down and eight My best Monday night memories come from watching the Steelers and probably, especially, Terry Bradshaw on Monday Night Football. And back we come, and there is the Bay Bridge. Closed for a month, reopened on the 17th of November, and a lot of traffic. That's a nice sight to see, a lot of traffic on the, on the Bay Bridge after that 30-day period. Sean Landetta, who leads the league in net punting, angles this one but he doesn't get it to the corner and it bounces into the end zone for a touchback and out it comes to the 20-yard line Niners will take it there and we can tell you that coming up this Saturday an exciting doubleheader college basketball there's Digger Phelps his fighting Irish to take on Louisville and you'll see it at 2 Eastern time and 11 in the morning Pacific from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis and then the uh, second half Features either LaSalle against DePaul or the Wildcats of Arizona coming off their win over Michigan the other day, taking on Oregon State in Corvallis, where it's always tough for the opposition. From the 20-yard line, the play fake, Montana throws to Taylor, and Taylor for 18 yards to the 38 and a first down. It's, uh, it, it's not really premier duty to have to play cornerback against the San Francisco 49ers, and that time... Mark Collins was really giving a lot of ground. Watch the cushion that he gives to John Taylor. When Taylor makes his move back to the inside, Collins slow to close. The problem when you're giving that room, you're giving him the completion, and he almost broke that one. Well, that's something that both Taylor and Rice do so well, the, their ability to run after the reception. Here's Craig, who is set out as a flanker in motion, and Montana throws back, and the catch is made by Taylor. And he takes it. He was the second or third receiver with Carl Banks making the tackle. Wow, that was beautiful. So Montana looks to Rathman. He looks to Rice. He still has time. And the boys. Has, has there ever been a quarterback that's had better pocket awareness uh, than Joe Montana? I mean, you're right, Frank. He sees who's coming after him. He's eluding them. And at the same time, he's monitoring his receivers downfield and always finds the open guy. I, uh, I, I've never seen anyone better at doing it. With Jones in motion, here's Craig taking it across the 50 to the 49-yard line. And a first down with Jones leading the way. A critical sequence here for the New York Giant defensive team. Trailing 14-7, to and the 49ers once again. Here's Bill Belichick, their defensive coordinator. And, boy, these guys are feeling a little heat right now. They cannot allow the 49ers to continue on down the field and get another touchdown. Giants in their first 11 games this season had allowed only 20 points in the first period. And they allowed 14 tonight and the Niners are the first down and Craig gets wrapped up but still is able to plunge forward 
to the 45. So he turns a two-yard gain into a four-yard gain. Howard and Reasons in on the tackle. This has been the year of the past for the 49ers. Craig has not had a 100-yard rushing game since the opening game of the season. But nevertheless, they keep going with it, keep showing it, keeping your defense honest, and they have been living by the pass, even though their numbers of attempts, rushing and passing, are fairly equal. Second and six from the 45-yard line. Fake to Craig. Montana looks right, then left. Finds the wide open Rice. He gets by Williams, and then Perry comes back to make the tackle at the 25-yard line. Jerry Rice. On that particular play, I'm not so sure that there was a New York Giant defensive lineman who'd gotten even one yard past the line of scrimmage. I mean, Joe Montana had the luxury of standing in that pocket. He, I, it's unfair to even call it a pocket. He was just standing in the backfield. There wasn't a giant within yards of him. Look at that. Two tight ends, picked up everybody. Montana looked right to Taylor. Taylor was covered, had all the time, as you pointed out, Dan, to come back to Rice. Well, that's uh, uh, the Giants have better put some more pressure on, on Joe Montana than that, or it's, uh, they're in big, big trouble. It's Taylor in motion on first down from the 25. Here comes Craig. He swings to the outside, gets by Banks. Flag goes down. A two-yard pickup, and there may have been a hold on the play. That's as good a job of working an official for a holding call that you will ever see. <laughs> Carl Banks was absolutely brilliant, working against Wesley Walls, and, I mean, he just literally forces the official to throw a flag. Number 89, offense, 10 yards, first down. There's John Taylor working downfield to the right of your screen. There's Walls working against Carl Banks, and Carl Banks literally just throwing his arms up in the air, saying, he's got me, he's got me, and he drew the flag. There's another look at it, and of course, he did have him, the right hand of Walls, clear up on the shoulder pads, holding Carl Banks. Six-year linebacker against the rookie tight end. First and 20. Swing it out to Craig, and he's taken down one-on-one -on -one by Williams at the 35-yard uh, line. Those are the plays that so concern Bill Parcells. High percentage stuff, you throw it out of the flat, you get it to Craig, you get it to Rathman, and then if you don't make the tackle, they're going to tack on 10, 15 yards to it. Same as Jerry Rice and John Taylor. They like to throw the little hitch to him. They like to throw the little slant and then just let the athlete come out and break the tackle and get the good yardage. That time, good play by Perry Williams. Second and 19 from the 34. And it's Frey looking for room through the middle and he gets it to the 31-yard line. And uh, Pepper Johnson, the demonstrative Pepper Johnson, uh, having, a, I was going to say, a dialogue with Frey, but that's a monologue. That's what his club needs. I mean, the Giants right now need a little fire defensively. They're not putting a lot of heat on the passer. They're uh, playing a little bit soft in their coverages, and they need some spark like that. Somebody's got to step up and say, guys, it's time to stiffen. And he was the guy who did it against Minnesota the last time we had the Giants on a Monday night, running an interception back for a touchdown. He play of that game. Third and 15, halfway through the second quarter. San Francisco ahead by seven. Montana is deep for street and throws underneath, and it's Rathman who gets taken down at the 27-yard line. Tackle made by Johnson, and we're looking at about a 44 or 45-yard field goal attempt here for Cooper. Giants have been using a defense that takes Johnny Cooks, a middle linebacker, and Gary Reasons, a middle linebacker, out. They bring in Pepper Johnson. He made the play there, and they bring in Sheldon White, a cornerback, and they play him as the other linebacker, and so far not scintillating, but at that point effective. They force the field goal. Kofer's longest field goal of the year, 47 yards. This a 44-yard attempt. Barry Hilton to hold, and Kofer's kick is true and long enough and good. So, Mike Kofer tacks on three more. Five points tonight for him and 97 for the season, and San Francisco leads by 10. Three series, three scores. Enough to do a whole lot better for the 49ers and their offensive team. Wouldn't want a punt for him, would you?
goal. He now has 97 points and leads in Dejas of Houston and Treadwell of Denver in the scoring race in the NFL, leading the league right now with 97 points. In this the 12th week of the season. Final game is week 12. Coper sends it down on one hop to the 10-yard line, and this is Neggett. Dave Neggett, the rookie, and he is taken down as he brings it back out to the 37. And I got to say one thing: it's uh, it's real tough to look any better than the 49ers have looked tonight on offense, and it's, it's as if Walsh has never left in a way. Well, they are the number one offense in the league, and I think for the Giants, Dan, they have to say with what they came with. And they've been able to move the football and hope that their defense comes up and get the turnover and can make the right play at the right time. Well, uh, the problem right now with the Giants isn't their offensive team. I mean, they have really moved the ball effectively, exactly. and I think that they'll do so for the balance of the evening. But defensively, they have got to figure out some way to pressure Montana. First and 10, Sims from the 37, throws, and it's picked off by Matt Millen. Well, you know the minute we talk about Matt Millen and his role in the passing game, he'll get a chance to make a big play. And the big play that time involved standing there and letting Bill Sims throw it right in your chest. Moat, the intended receiver out of the backfield, I think it was Moat, yeah. <laughs> well, and that ball just hit Millen. He could not avoid catching it. Well, uh, Moat went hither when Sims was expecting him to go yawn. <laughs> I don't know any other way of describing that. Zeke Moat breaks to the inside and... Phil Sims expecting him to break to the outside just launches a perfect pass right to right to Matt Millen. At the very worst, just stand there. Uh, no one could have dropped that. Marcellus is going to send Moat hither and yon when he gets to the bench. It's a 35-yard line. First and 10. It's Millen's first interception in two years. And Craig picks up six, and Matt took the ball with him. His first as a 49er. We talked about Millen's talent though as the giant now is down in the field millen may uh, sign that ball and send it to al davis <laughs> matt millen not too pleased and there is lawrence taylor down on the ground and any new york giant fan around the country right now has a lump in their throat lawrence taylor in obvious pain the way he's rolling around and here's a guy who, and we all know how he plays the game, but he has been through his career, which is now incredibly in its ninth season, remarkably durable. Very infrequently injured. Remarkably productive as well. The most dominating football player I've ever seen. He's had a lot of problems. He's always been able to play with it. He had a pulled hamstring a year ago that he missed some action with that. Other than that, Lawrence Taylor, now in his ninth year, has been injury-free. So for the Giants, now down by 10, now faced with the 49ers driving in their territory, and now, of course, faced with the prospect of losing, at least temporarily, Lawrence Taylor. And they are looking at the right knee. So it comes at the end of a play on which Craig goes to the right, picks up about six, and the clock is stopped with 6.29 now, remaining in the first half of Candlestick Park. That's Dr. Russell Warren. He's the orthopedic specialist with the Giants. Travels with him, and they are looking at the right leg of Lawrence Taylor. I think this might be severe yeah. enough that they feel they are going to need a stretcher to take Lawrence off the field, some sort of vehicle. And that's exactly what they have called for. Well, it's, it's silly for us to grope for words to try to describe what this means to the New York Giants. Bill Belichick, he's a defensive coordinator. Things will change dramatically for... Belichick, and he's discussing the changes they'll have to make as the game will go on. It, it's going to be such an emotional loss to the Giants. This is the leader. He's the heart and the soul of it. He is the spirit. If the, things go wrong, he's the one that gets it up. The, the one thing about this injury is that he's he's totally away from the play. 
Lawrence Taylor lined up on the far side of the offensive formation. It's a it's a sweep to the right. Lawrence Taylor to the left side of the offensive formation, way away from the play. And without Taylor, they will now be minus two really vital cogs. The other on offense, the tight end Mark Pavaro, who is on injured reserve with a, a knee injury. The Giants uh, hopeful that he can come back, rehabilitate, and be ready for the playoffs. And now it'll be Lawrence Taylor who will be taken back to the locker room. Lawrence Taylor so, so far away from the play. That, that we don't even have it in any of our shots. I know Kenny and Craig and everybody in the truck searching for it, but we don't have it in, in any of our shots because he, he was a good 20 yards away from where the action was. It was a sweep to the right. He was split to the right side defensively for the Giants. On the outside. A ride uh, that anyone who's ever played this game and has taken it uh, has nightmares about. Mm. Now we get performed as quickly as we can and give you the word. So as play resumes now at the 29-yard line, it is second down and four for San Francisco. They lead by 10. And the Giants right now with a, a nickel defense. As Montana throws on a slant to the 20-yard line, it's John Taylor, and he has a first down. At the 17 is Perry Williams and Pepper Johnson come in to make the tackle. We want, just want to explain a little bit why Lawrence Taylor is... Uh, here he is at the top of the formation, and you're going to watch him just tied up here. We're looking at a sweep that comes all the way down here. You can follow Lawrence until he moves out of our camera angle, but that's why that we can't find him anywhere. You can see how far removed he is from what's happening on the field, and... Unfortunate and, and very rare to get hurt when you're that far away from the action. Giants have moved Johnny Cook into Taylor's spot outside, and that doesn't matter because Brent Jones makes the catch for the touchdown. 49ers like Jones down close. Rapidly improving tight end Jamie Williams, who was injured early in the season actually in training camp was expected to be the at least a receiving tight end but Brent Jones has come on split wide to the left just made a move beating Terry Kennard the Giants safety and Montana was right on the numbers this is the best offensive football team I have seen in a long time it's a machine they've had the ball four times they have three touchdowns and a field goal Cooper's extra point is good and with 5.29 remaining in the half, the Giants get testy with Walls involved and a couple of Giants as well. Renee Thompson and Greg Cox. Sprained knee and sprained ankle is the report, the initial report from the Giant locker room. 5.29 to go in the half. It's a 17-point 49er lead. The Giants are hoping for a little deja vu. They're down by 17 right now. Unfortunately, Bavaro's not here. And now neither is Lawrence Taylor. Mm -hmm. Colfer's kick taken at the six-yard line. This is Mark Ingram who gets spun around and taken down out of the 26-yard line. And the Giants with a uh, pretty key drive of coming down by 17 and another scuffle breaking out. Greg Cox, a former 49er, now the... Uh, a giant special teams performer and safety playing B guy renewing old acquaintances they've been using him at the linebacker position and on special teams so the Giants now who drove 82 yards for a touchdown earlier Jim Bird is in at nose tackle for San Francisco. First down from the 26-yard line. Sims has to dump it off. And it's incomplete. And uh, the 49ers want a, uh, a penalty here. And Bob McElwee says no. Speaking of Jim Bird, let's uh, pick up the maternity watch. We mentioned he became a, a new father new again. Father, he has a young son named Jim. And if Colleen, his wife, is watching, congratulations on your new little Ashley. A little daughter born this morning at uh, 11.28 a.m. Eastern Time. And 
the biggest help of all, the wife of his combatant right now, Bart Oates, who was there all the time. And what an odd situation this is. Yep. Oates against Burke. Second down and ten. Sims. To the far side, and he has run out of bounds. And, of course, it, it was Burt who provided so much of uh, the pregame hype that we saw. So much uh, written and said this week about Burt, and he's going to knock Parcells down on the far side. And we saw him yesterday, and he says, give me a break with all it this stuff. so much fun, and I think he was kind of hurt. I think he felt that Parcells took this serious. You never know about Parcells. He may be using, like, enemy clippings or something to get his team involved. But there's Burt. He's not chasing his good friend Phil yeah. Sims. He wasn't exactly uh, closing ground uh, between <laughs> himself and Phil Sims. <laughs> Third and five from the 31 yard line with a four man rush. Sims gets taken down by the ankle at the 27 by Pierce Holt. And that's his second sack of the night. This one is getting out of control. Well, that one's a solo. No help from Charles Haley there. This is Phil Sims just not able to find any, anyone. You label this one a coverage sack. You credit the secondary. They've just blanketed everyone, and Pierce Holt gets a hand on the ankle, and down goes Sims. Sean Lendetta kicking, and backing up is John Taylor inside his 20-yard line. Sprints for the sideline and gets bumped out at the 32 by Greg Jackson. And so the 49ers, who have not been stopped yet, three touchdowns and a field goal, have it out at the, uh, about the 33. Joe Montana, three Super Bowl rings. The, the 49ers, unquestionably the team of the 80s, they've already clinched the best regular season record for the decade. They came very close to, to going into another Super Bowl, you'll recall, in the championship game with Washington in 83. A very curious call at the end of the game cost them that game. And here they are trying to go to the Super Bowl for the fourth time in the decade. From the 33, Roger Craig turns it into about a five-yard game as Banks and Washington converge on the stop. Johnny Cook's out there also stripping the interference. Now, Johnny Cook's came to the Giants last year as a free agent from Indianapolis said uh, a former number one draft pick for Indianapolis where he played outside linebacker and when he came to the Giants they moved him to the inside so he's not unfamiliar with the spot he's playing but he also is not Lawrence Taylor and he would be the first one to tell you he does not provide the speed the quickness and it is a relatively new spot he hasn't been out there since he was with Indianapolis Craig in motion, second and six. Montana fires. There's Rice again at the 50. Great move to the outside of the 47. They've got to play him so soft. The amazing thing about Rice, he can be whatever you want him to be. The deep threat, how many bombs has he caught in his career? He can also be a possession receiver. Anything. And he <laughs> does shake off the tackling. And you know what else the guy is? The guy's remarkably durable. The guy's got, uh, what, it's the upper 70s, almost 80 games uh, without uh, without missing a game. And that's, I mean, that's when you're the complete ball player. You're not a guy that plays two and has to sit one out and then comes back and maybe can play for a month and then a, a little thing keeps you out. I mean, here's the total package. There's the guy that's everything. From the 47-yard line, it's first and 10. And this is Craig. No game. We talked about Rice at the... Uh, Outset tonight, the fact that he didn't practice much this week with the damaged ribs. He had damaged ribs before last week's game with Green Bay, still caught nine. We watched him last night. He dropped a whole bunch of passes when the 49ers were out here loosening up. <laughs> but when the lights really come on and the cameras come on, he is a prime time player, as Dick Vitale might put it. The other thing they say about him is that as the game goes on, they can send him on fly after fly after pass route after pass route, and he gets stronger. And as the defensive back perhaps start to wear down a little bit, that's when you have to watch it. Second and 11 from the 48, two and a half minutes to go in the half. Montana hits Rathman, and Rathman is taken out of bounds at the 41. He's shy of the first by four, Myron Guyton with the tackle. Could there have been uh, a less likely candidate to develop into a star NFL receiver than, than Tom Rathman? I mean, here's a guy that plays uh, at Nebraska. I wish he'd take his helmet off. 
Uh, that's it. it leads all NFL running backs. We've been talking about that. Now here's the guy. His entire career at Nebraska only caught five passes. Now you talk about an underutilized talent. Now granted, Nebraska doesn't fill the air with footballs, but uh, I wonder if they knew what kind of a receiving talent they had in Tom Rathman. Third and four from the 42-yard line. Montana and escapes, fumbles, and the Giants have the football. Bob McAlee says New York ball. Terry Kennard comes up with the recovery. With 2.20 to play in the half. And that is exactly what the Giants needed at this point. And said it a moment ago that secondary should deserve it. This fumble recovery because Montana really had no place to put it. And Duckins came in and put the hit on Montana and they had also involved in it Greg Cox, the former 49er we talked about earlier, the unprotected free agent. That's actually Cox with his right hand comes in and strips the ball away from Montana. First and ten from the 45, looking ahead the Giants with all of their timeouts, and Sims's throw is off the hands of Lionel Manuel, and a flag is down at the 42-yard line. Last incompleted. And Manuel comes up limping. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 94 defense, going to the head, 15 yards, first down. Charles Healy just thumped Phil Sims as he came by. Major thumping. They move Haley all along the line of scrimmage. They'll have on the right side of the left side. Usually defensively, they roll the zone to Haley. And he's the man that Phil Sims is keying on to determine what kind of pass coverage, what kind of pass rush is going to be. First and ten from the 40. This is Megat. And that little counter play didn't fool anybody. He has stopped at the line of scrimmage after the play fake. Pierce Holt gets credit for the tackle at the 40-yard line. And that'll take us to the two-minute warning. So the Giants have all of their timeouts left. It'll be second and 10 at the 40 when we come back to San Francisco for the first one. It is scheduled to see a lot of action tonight. And once again, the 49ers take a timeout. The Defensive team of the 49ers, uh, George Seifert, the former defensive coordinator, now head coach. They like to substitute liberally, and they found themselves with the wrong personnel on the field, looking at a Giants passing formation, and Millen and the run defense was still in there, so timeout, 49ers. Exactly. When the uh, Giants came up with uh, the four wideouts, they were minus uh, Eric Wright and Tim McKayer who come in. And Matt Millen was still out on the field, although I don't know that you don't leave him out there. The guy's got an <laughs> interception already. Maybe play him at a little corner. Millen, of course, was uh, released by the Raiders. He said ten teams called. Four expressed serious interest. He considered very seriously going to Seattle because uh, his old coach Tom Flores went up there to become the president of the team but he said there's something like an extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars from uh, Mr. DeBartolo's calf kill settled that issue. It will make a difference. Yep. Players win games but an organization wins the Super Bowl. Tim dropping it, picking it up, throwing on the run and batted away oh, but a by Tim McKayer and boy you saw how important that timeout was that the 49ers called because he and Wright were the two guys who came in after the timeout. Sims could have picked up a little earlier on Ingram and it would have been an easy six. Sims under a little pressure after he drops the ball almost to the line of scrimmage and right here, Ingram is wide open. And a great play, a diving deflection by McCire. Odessa Turner, the intended receiver. Second and 10, 126 to go in the half. And Sims has it knocked away by Fagan. Third down. As an offensive lineman, sometimes it really works out better for you if you run your guy past the quarterback. There's an example of the Giants' front wall doing such an effective job of neutralizing Fagan up near the line of scrimmage. He's reduced to nothing more than being able to jump up and block the pass. That's what he did that time. Third and ten. 
Deep play for New York, going for the end zone, and the official goes down. Manuel is out of bounds. And I think you could see the official beginning to signal he was out of bounds before he went down, and then he finally makes the call official. And that's the, the back judge who was intimately involved in that play, Jim Kearney. And you have to give any... Kearney credit. Look at the positioning there, Frankie. Watch his eyes. They are right on the ground watching the feet all the way. Look at that. The catch is worth replaying. He's obviously out of bounds. But great hands on part of Manuel, who I still has not taken a touchdown pass from Phil Sims. I, <laughs> I guess that's no. what you call a delayed call. <laughs> and a call here. Devotion <laughs> to duty. Yeah. Down but not out. Meanwhile, the Giants have to take a time out here, and Nitmo will come in for what will be a close to a 40-yard attempt. We're watching Nitmo at practice, and very much like Ali Haji Sheik when he was in his prime when he first came up and was setting records with the Giants. When he pops that ball, he gets it up off the foot very quickly. It'd be a very difficult thing to block, providing you get a good snap out of it. And he certainly was getting the distance, getting easily from 50 yards out. If Chris Berman was here, he'd be calling him the Scandinavian Scallywag, I would imagine, or Chris, something like that. Chris Berman is here. <laughs> and he did he... call him that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for blowing it out. 39-yard <laughs> attempt. Hostetler puts it down. Nitmo's kick is good. Boy, it's ugly, but yep. it was there. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> was it side over side, I think? <laughs> not end over end but whatever they don't have a column for ugly no nope. they just put it up there not at all they took remember he uh parcells took his uh, earlier three off the board after the penalty and they picked up seven instead and and there it is uh the spectacular sight the city of san francisco on this uh beautiful night in late november meanwhile the rams continue to chase the 49ers and look at that night for willie flipper anderson henry Elwood was hurt and so Anderson picking up the slack last night, 15 catches, an incredible 336 receiving yards as the Rams pull one out in overtime over the Saints. And what a night for Jim Everett. He made some completions last night you could hardly believe. We, if you just run that many patterns, you're going to be exhausted. What a night. We see the, the Rams in Anaheim against the 49ers two weeks from tonight. Right now, if the 49ers win, they'll remain two in front. And again, if the Giants lose this game, they'd be only one in front of Philadelphia. That would mean if the Eagles were to win next week, the teams would be tied. But in effect, the Eagles would be in the lead in the division because they would have beaten the Giants twice. After the Eagles, the Giants will face Denver. At Denver. Nitmo kick off fielded at the five. This is Terrence Flagler. Coming up the middle. And he takes it to the 29, and the 49ers have one timeout remaining. Dwayne Giles. Of course, Denver, a winner yesterday. They've already moved to that 10-2 and two mark, and the winner of this game will, will join Denver with the best record in the National Football League at 10-2. and two. And, boy, that's... Talk about Dan Reeves and the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos, what a uh, what a turnaround. And clearly the most improved team in the league, especially defensively. I've, it's been a long time since I've seen one turn around like that and of course there's an off night for Joe Montana only 17 of 18 yeah. gotta, gotta be looking to Steve Young here pretty soon how did he blow that one to the 29 yard line he's going deep for Rice and a little too deep Sheldon White had good coverage and then Rice got behind White but the ball a little overthrown uh, Sheldon White had great coverage I mean he's really there stride for stride with Jerry Rice but like all great receivers at the last second, in that last stride or two before he tries to catch it, Rice has that little shifting of gears that allows him to move about a half a yard beyond White. But give Sheldon White credit. That's, that's excellent coverage for a guy locked up one-on-one. -on -one. And not a bad pass. Just with that kind of coverage, he had it just right. off the fingertips. Guy 17. Moving 40, 50 yards in the air. Guy 17 is 19. That's time to ride the final a little bit. <laughs> Second and ten. Here comes Craig on a sweep behind uh, McIntyre. And he's taken down by Kennard. Now that the 34-yard uh, line. And the clock stops with 50 seconds now remaining in the first half. 
And at the half, as usual, uh, you'll have a chance to vote. We've got some unusual plays for you tonight. Oh, to say the least. Yep. I mean, real unusual. Get the vote on memorable moments. There it is. Greatest moments. Penny Reeves. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> you don't want to miss this. Don't go too far. In fact, the double D may play a prominent role in our halftime tonight. Third and seven. And Craig gets banged down by Pepper Johnson. Pepper doesn't know what the score is. Yeah. And you're not supposed to. Yeah. And there's Parcell screaming for a timeout. Yep. Yeah. Pepper should have signaled T. Meanwhile, you've got a, another little skirmish breaking out. Steve Wallace, the tackle, and Carl Banks changing some uh, pre-holiday wishes. Yeah. One of the reasons that Parcells wanted that timeout, he wants a chance for Megan to return the football. He's got a averaging in double numbers, and here we'll go back and pick up another memorable moment. That's yesterday in the Washington-Chicago game. Mark Griffin had a sensational day, and Art Monk made that catch for a touchdown as the Redskins bomb Chicago 38-14. to I refuse to stand back and give credit to the other people because we think we are absolutely an atrocious football team at this point right now. I doubt we have to play the rest of them, but there's, there's no question in my mind that we will be fortunate, fortunate to win one more game. Uh, this is just not a good football team, and I fooled myself. I thought we were. And for the first time in a while, some people are beginning to believe it when he says that. Here's the punt by Pelton, fielded by Meggett. And Meggett snakes his way out to the 34, and here we go again. One of the games the Bears has to play is against these 49ers. I can understand Fit is thinking. Mm -hmm. And Chicago uh, plays Minnesota next week in the, what's now a, a, a huge game in the Central Division. A division featuring the Packers. And the Pack it's a, is back. You know, you talk about Mike Dicker, though. It's, it, it's a... It's an unusual psychological ploy for a coach to talk like that. Uh, normally, uh, coaches are the fountain of eternal optimism, and, and to hear a coach talk like that, I, uh, I guess the players on the Bears know how to take it, know what he's trying to tell them, at least. Here's Sims, knocked down, sacked by Pierce Holt, and then Larry Roberts comes in to help finish him off. A big half for Pierce Holt. I guess so. He had five and a half sacks coming into the game tonight and that's just grinded out football that's nothing pretty no blitz nothing on everyone straight away and Sims no time to even look downfield good move that time against the center Bart Oates and there's Holt again making the tackle and boy this guy is uh, this guy hates for this half to come to an end he'd rather keep on playing he's making everything happen mm -hmm. make it running out the clock and so the Giants go back to the locker room where they'll check on Lawrence Taylor if he joined us late. He's out, injured knee, injured ankle, parted off the field. And these two teams, each nine and two, have played 30 minutes and San Francisco leading by two touchdowns. With Monday Night Football ready to return after a commercial, a message from the National Football League, and a word from our ABC station. To the seven yard line he had all kinds of trouble with it mike wilson down there to make the tackle and the giants will start in a hole as we begin the second half and you take a look at the numbers through the first 30 minutes of play well the numbers uh, needless to say reflect the dominance of the 49ers and their ability to move the ball offensively 227 yards in total offense and half number one and of course that's Further reflected in Joe Montana's numbers, who had just about as good a first half as a quarterback can have. With the exception of his one fumble, almost a perfect half. Cross in motion from the eight. Sims on a roll and under some pressure and chased by Haley and fires. And it is out of bounds. No good. Zeke Moa at the receiver. And if you speculate as to what the Giants have to do, they have to do what they came in here trying to do, and that is to go up on top and... Al and I were here in 1986 when the Giants were down 17 to nothing at halftime. They came back and sparked by Bavaro, their tight end, who's missing tonight on the IR. And as you can see, he's well out. They were able to come back and win that game 21 to 17. But this is a different football team than the team of 86. Second and 10. 
Giants from the eight. Fake draw. Sends over the middle, and the catch made at the 20-yard line, and that's Zeke Moab for a New York first down, tackled by Ronnie Lott. I think they can just stay with that all night as long as they want. Ronnie Lott, of course, laying way back on, into the zone. He wasn't covering Moat off the line of scrimmage again. They had Moat tied up with a linebacker, and they seem to be willing to stay with that. Moat has been open all night long, and then the, the safety men come up and make the spot. And, of course, Ronnie Lott, a big young man out of USC, now in his ninth year. The Travelers' man of the year for these 49ers. They work on the field and off. The Travelers Man of the Year for the NFL will be announced at the Super Bowl and Ronnie Lott a contender. Four wide receivers and Sims fires and it's an errant pass at the 26-yard line. Michael Walter covering Ingram on the play. Second down. Michael Walter, he's one of only two 49ers who have started every game on defense this year. Only Charles Haley and Walter. And that... Uh, really points up what we uh, talked about at the beginning of the telecast tonight. They have been able to withstand so many injuries. Well, Ronnie Lott what, missed five games. Lott missed five. Of course, they've lost Jeff Fuller for the season, maybe for his career, and Michael uh, Carter, the great nose tackle, still out. Sims on second down, and finding the seam is Manuel, and it uh, turns into a big game to the 47-yard line where Chet Brooks makes the tackle. Well, and this is a very effective job of quarterbacking now by Phil Sims. Set some of these up by working inside, going to his tight ends, and now the crossing pattern working underneath is Lionel Manuel. And you know that's a type of a that's a type of a reception that when you look at it on the field might have been broken for a much bigger play by someone who has more foot speed than Manuel. Not a real fleet receiver. First down, a little screen out to Megan. He's into 49er territory. He's inside the 30. He's inside the 20. Megan staying inbounds. Touchdown. Oh, that's a big time play. I didn't see any way that Megan was going to get into the end zone. He, he was cut off and boxed off. Uh, I, that, that's a superlative job, Frank, of using the sideline staying inbounds and evading a tackle. What a move he put on Chet Brooks. Let's pick it up at the end. 49ers anticipating pass. Giants come at the screen, gets a good block, springs it into the open now. Watch, see, he almost looks like he's playing like he's wide open, then he eases off and puts it into another gear. He eases up and takes it right away from Chet Brooks. Brooks had the angle. Brooks had everything. Credit William Roberts up at the line of scrimmage. He's the guy that floated out and made the initial block that sprung Meggett. We saw Meggett on opening night on Monday night uh, in September in Washington. A 62-yard reception. Here a beauty to put New York right back in it, and the Giants go 92 yards on this drive. The block by William Roberts, and again, Chet Brooks has the angle, and Megan, I think, surprising Brooks with that burst of speed. He just eased off a little, and then all of a sudden he kicked it into another gear. This is what Parcells has the young man in there for. Almost like returning a punt for Dave Megan, who has done so much for the Giants, and they come rumbling back to make it 24-17. And Phil Sims says, we did it once before, we can do it again. Candlestick Park, where the 49ers had led by 17. It's now down to 7. And the Giants to kick off. Warren Nitmo puts it in the air. Sends it down to the 6-yard line. Terrence Flagler can't Turn the corner, and he's taken down by Renee Thompson, who's done a tremendous job on special teams for the Giants this year. Let's go back and take a look, but watch the block right here. Here's Meggett, but William Roberts, the former Buckeye, is the guy that springs this play. Just take a look at it. He swings out, and there is the block right there on Johnny Jackson, and that allows David Meggett to just take over. And from here, though, it's all Meggett. And Chet Brooks got nothing but air, and I'm sure... He wants to see the film to try to figure out how that happened. 49ers from the 17. And Montana will put it up. Their first play of the second half is a reception by Rathman. He gets to the 25, a little short of the first down. Reasons and Johnson in the tackle. You know full well the Jazz defense has met on the sidelines with Bill Belichick. And this is a very important, maybe even a critical series for the Jazz defense to somehow shut down this 49er offense. They haven't done it yet. 
and this is the time they have to do it. Second down and one, and the 49ers come up in a tight formation. They send Rice in motion. And on a sweep, it's Craig. And Craig turns it inside and picks up the first down, and he carries Howard with him in Washington as well. Don Washington going for a ride as Craig turns the corner and sends it after the 31-yard line, a first down for San Francisco. This really provides San Francisco with an opportunity to do something they'd like to do, and that's, that's work on their running game. Joe Montana is having such a brilliant year throwing the ball that the running game of the 49ers has been somewhat neglected. Roger Craig's average is down almost a yard per carry, and as you get closer and closer to playoff time, it's a it's the opportunity all coaches look for, a chance to work on the ground attack. From the 31, and they're not on the ground. It goes through the air, and it's Montana hitting Roger Craig for about a four-yard pickup. We're talking about Montana before statistically having the best year ever. When you look at all the numbers that go into a quarterback's rating, there's really, one statistic really stands out. Average yards per pass attempt. And he's averaging 9.1. The league average is 7.2. And, and I agree, that's a, a really meaningful number, but I tell you what I like, Al, I like the ratio of touchdowns to interceptions. And we're dealing with a guy here that's got 22 touchdowns and only four <laughs> interceptions. That works. Five and a half to one. Here's Craig. After the 39-yard line, he got a flag down. As, uh, there was movement in the line before the inception of the play, and Bob McElwee will tell us that. G. Penalty is against the Giants. Giants going with four down linemen now with Taylor out of the ball game and trying to get the pass pressure with the four big men up front. Offside, 74, defense, five yards, second down. Meanwhile, Taylor still in uniform, but highly doubtful he could play. That's Eric Coward, the nose tackle, of a player who really wants to be noticed, a guy that wants to move out of the shadow that was cast by the former Giants nose tackle for eight years, Jim Burt, who's now here with the 49ers, a bigger, stronger, more active version than Jim Burt, but still has room to prove something. Jim Burt was a great player. Second and one, pretty much a free play, and Montana exploits it by hitting Jones along the near sideline for a first down to the 49-yard line. Brent Jones. Maybe Joe will throw a bad pass tonight, just to... Think so? Well, maybe he'll get a giant in his face sometime. Maybe he'll just, you know, kind of dangle some hope in front of the Giants that it's, that it's possible. How do, you, how do you really throw it any, any more accurately than he's done tonight? Taylor left, right, right. Jones, the tight end on the right side. He's scored five passes, and Montana throws. And he finds Rice at the 39, and he is dropped to back at the 40-yard line, and all kinds of flags come in. Myron Guyton was the guy. Well, there's no disputing the lateness of the hit, and then that's just an obvious sign of Personal frustration. Personal unnecessary roughness, 28 defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. He means 29. He means 29, and Jerry Rice is down clearly and down for a while before Guyton comes in. And that's just not a very smart play. He hit it on the head. That's just total frustration. The Giants in a five defensive back zone defense. Rice finding the opening. Oh. Montana with all the time in the world gets the ball in there, and Guyton total, totally frustrated and comes in late. Ridiculous play. Cost the team. Cost your team dearly. Ten minutes to go in the third. San Francisco leading by seven. Here's Craig on first down. Nothing doing, and he's uh, twisted around by John Washington. Give Johnny Cook some credit there. He's the guy that disrupted that play by getting upfield, taking on the lead blocker, and kicking it to the outside. John Washington comes in and cleans up, but there's Johnny Cook, the former Indianapolis Colt, another one draft choice there, who... Really sitting inside here for the Giants. Plays a little outside linebacker. Plays inside. 
Giants need a big play. The Giants need either a 49er air or someone on their side to come up, step to the line, and make a big play. Second and ten. It's Taylor lined up in the backfield, number 82, and then they send him in motion. Single coverage out here on Rice. And the pass intended for Rice and broken up by Mark Collins. A little floater, and Montana goes down, and there's a penalty marker down because Gary Reason leveled him. Yeah, they're going to call roughing the passer on Reasons. This is the second personal foul in a row on the Giants. Montana missed two days of practice this week with sore wrists. Foul, roughing the passer, 55 defense, using the helmet, using the helmet to the chest. Oh, he just one step. Well, that's, you heard one of the Giants protesting. I thought you got one step. Yeah, they're going to say right there. I mean, that's what draws the flag, that Gary Reasons puts the helmet at Joe's chest and then drives him all the way into the ground without attempting to get it out. But again, you're, <laughs> you know, quarterbacks wear pads too. And, I, and, and you know, they've got to take a shot every now and then. And I'm not advocating that uh, you wreak mayhem on a quarterback. But my gosh, here's a guy that rushes in there. Frank, well, what do you think? I mean, that's just a tough call. Well, it even looked, uh, even as bad as it looked, it looked like he tried to pull up on it. He, he was the one that said, I get one step, and under the rules, he does get one step. First and ten from the 11, here comes Craig on a sweep to the near side, and he fights his way to the eight-yard line. Roger Craig, I mean, that's one of those that on the stat sheet, it's a, it looks like a simple three-yard gain, but he turns no gain into a, into a little gain anyway. Craig brings so many dimensions to these 49ers. We know what kind of a receiver he is. And look at this. Now, this could have easily been stopped at the line of scrimmage. Takes off one tackle. <laughs> takes off Collins. I guess he shakes off yeah. Collins. And turns up a no-gainer for a three-yard pickup. He just threw Collins out of the way. That was not much of an effort by Mark Collins at uh, making a tackle. Second and seven for the first. Eight for the touchdown. Montana under pressure. The ball is loose, and the Giants try to pounce on it and do to recover at the 14-yard line. And Fast Carl Banks. it out. Washington recovered it. I talked about somebody having to step to the line and make the big play, and number 58 is the guy. Carl Banks. <laughs> Coming all the way in from the back side, just stayed with it, stayed with it, and hacked the ball. He hacked it intentionally and knocked it out. Picked up the quarterback, Joe Montana, and then knocked the ball out. Here he comes. Pro Bowl linebacker. Gets away from Rathman. Montana flushed out of the pocket. But look at the swing. The right arm stripping the ball from Montana. Oh, that's, that's just a superb play by Carl Banks. Intentionally knocking the ball loose. Giants from the 13-yard line on first and 10. And Meggett drops it. He started to look up field. It was Tina Turner ready to come up and pop him, and he dropped it. Second down. You know, it's 44 to go in the third. It's no accident that a player makes a play like Banks just made right there. Think back to our opener. Remember the Redskins and the Giants, and we saw Lawrence Taylor do exactly the same thing, pursuing a play coming up from behind, and then the big hatchet job with the right arm, and knocks the ball loose. I mean, that's a, that's a supremely intelligent play by a ball player. Dennis and, Smith twice last week in the Washington-Denver game. Yeah, yeah. Great linebacker, Banks. And, and, and smart to do it to someone like Montana, who's who's not a Roger Craig or a Rathman, used to carrying the ball and putting it away. He just plays a different role than Lawrence Taylor in the giant scheme of things. Second and ten, and Sims to the 14-yard line. The catch is made by Turner, and he's uh, taken out of bounds by Walter. Some seven yards short of the first down. 8.37 to go in the period, and we can tell you that tomorrow night, Coach meets his match, the women's basketball coach. It's round ball versus football, and Craig T. Nelson stars as coach tomorrow after Roseanne. Third and seven, New York, from the 17-yard line. With four receivers, and now a fifth, Nugget sent out into the pattern. It's dropped by Turner at the 22, but a flag is down. Don Griffin may have hit him before the ball got there. Watt and Johnny Jackson also there, and it's against the 49ers. And your call is right on, Al. It's going to go against Don Griffin. First interference, 29, defense, first down. 
almost looked like Griffin became disoriented out there and wasn't quite sure either when the ball was coming or whatever, but you can see he's all over Turner and actually tries to tackle it before the ball gets there. That's, that's just going to draw the flag every time. It's almost like he wasn't sure what was going on and when the ball had been thrown. First and ten from the 24-yard line. Now it's Neggett on the ground. Now to the 28-yard uh, line. Again, so much this season, the Giants, as we mentioned, Otis Anderson, and they've been using a lot of the rookie Tillman as well, but tonight in a new twist, it's Meggett playing a lot on first down. Remarkable the football player. I said earlier, 5'7", 180-pounder, a rookie fifth-round draft pick out of Towson State, but he played a couple of years at Morgan State, and he was a quarterback there to begin with, and he was an all-conference cornerback, and then he was a an all-conference tailback at Towson State, so he can do it all. Otis Anderson, meanwhile, has carried the ball just twice tonight. Second and six, here's Moai making the catch, and the first down as Tina Turner runs him out of bounds. And as much as they have used Moat tonight, they could even use him more because the 49ers still are relying on the outside linebackers. That time it was number 58 that they covered Moat with, and he was wide open and gets the first down. Tina Turner. And he is a good pass coverage man, but he has good quickness and all that, but ordinarily you will not want him lined up with a tight end. First down from the 39-yard line. Here's Sims hitting Stephen Baker. Oh, and does he get jarred at the 43-yard line? Hello, hello. <laughs> he actually took a ride. That wasn't much of a hit. He just got on the back of the defender. And Ronnie Lott, it just took a, took a ride like he was on a buckling bronc or something. Uh, no, I, I, I know a lot of people would like to do this. <laughs> Well, it could have been a lot worse knowing Ronnie Lott. Now watch, he goes up. Lott gets under him. He goes up. Oh, yeah. There this, it is. Yeah, call up. I will arrange that. Anyone would like to do this? That'll, that'll get the 900 number for us. 18-yard <laughs> pickup. Baker's first catch of the night from the 42. Pressure is on. Screen is set up. Mega drops the ball. It's a live ball. Stripped by Burt. San Francisco has it. Oh, and Jim Burt just takes a little poke at Doug Riesenberg, and Phil Sims shoves him out of the way. <laughs> Don Griffin is the man who recovers it. Jim Burt from the nose tackle position, sliding down the line of scrimmage, number 64. Was Doesn't it know Dave Megan? He wasn't there when this rookie came up. What's well, exactly the same play that the Giants ran for a touchdown. Roberts kicking out, but this time, Burt spoils it all. Comes out from the inside, strips the ball, and... Once again, the 49ers make a big play. Best play by an announcer. You're voting for it. There it is. Uh, O.J., of course, leading, but in, in the most embarrassing moment of Ahmad Rashad's career, he's trailing Deardorff. one 900 339 abc He's been on the phone the entire half here. I think I get the vote for myself and ABC pays for it. <laughs> That's what you think. Here's Rathman picking up 11 and a first down to the 45-yard line after the 49ers take over following the fumble. Burt and Sims. <laughs> Quite a by play there. Right at the end of that play as Burt play as Burt got tangled up with Doug Riesenberg, shoved him away. Phil Sims stuck his nose into it, gave Burt a shove, and it was kind of unfriendly for a moment. I think they both kind of laughed and walked away from it. I'm not so sure if they laughed. <laughs> well, it sounds good. <laughs> From Colleen would like it that way. Figuratively. Here comes an end around. They haven't run this in about two months. And Jerry Rice takes it inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. That's a play, and a flag goes down. They ran that play once in each of the first four games this year, and not at all since. But it will come back after a 19-yard pickup. Well, they had filed that away and brought it back out tonight, but unfortunately for the 49ers, it comes back. Illegal push in the back. 84 on the offense. 10 yards. First down. One of the reasons they took that play out was the diminishing returns. In week one, it worked for 17 against Indy, then 11 in week two, then three. Then the Rams knocked them for an 11-yard loss, so they took it out of the playbook for a while and just brought it back again. Well, it worked that time except for Brent Jones. Indeed it did. 
this kind of play you put in against a team that is pursuing with the defense. Meanwhile, here is Steve Young in the game. Montana bending over. It looks like his ribs bothering him on the sideline. So Joe has to come out at least for a play. Well, Montana, Al was leading the play. He threw the block out in front of that play. It looked like he injured himself doing so. So Steve Young, with some very impressive numbers of his own, goes right to the air. It's a little high for Roger Craig, who's covered by Johnny Cooks. Joe Montana is actually going to lead the blocking. There he is to the right of the screen, blocking on Carl Banks. That's not a very good matchup. Boy, but it's a darn good block by Montana. He puts Carl Banks on the ground. I mean, that is an unbelievable block by a quarterback. We said earlier that Joe Montana had missed a couple of days' practice this past week. We'll look at it again, and he just stays right with it. Now, Banks rolls over with him and catches Montana in the ribs with the knee. Hey, that's a block to be proud of for Joe. On second and seven, it is Craig. It was almost the 40 a 40-yard line. Almost a bounty block. It, it was, <laughs> here we go again. Yeah. Although I would, uh, I'm sure Ed DeBartolo over in his uh, box is saying to himself, uh, that's not why I'm paying this guy big bucks. I, uh, I'm not sure I want number 16 leading reverses and leading sweeps. Those... I'll touch on the fact that they had kind of put that away earlier in the season and not used it. One of the reasons probably is that Montana, he's a competitor, he's an athlete. Every time mm -hmm. they run that, he is out in front trying to lead it. He has thrown through the years some great blocks on similar plays. Oh, well, it might be time to stop, yeah. I mean, 11th year in the league, <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> Third down, short five from the 40-yard line. Steve Young flushed out. He's very, very mobile, but not mobile enough to get away from Pepper Johnson. Well short of the first down, and the 49ers will come in with their punting unit. Boy, and that's Leonard Marshall again. We talked early about how he's really come on. He's the guy that forces Young out of the pocket. Take a look at the top of your screen. There's Leonard Marshall, number 70, down in his stance. Boy, look at that quick move to the inside on Bubba Paris. And Steve Young forced out of the pocket way before. And that's kind of delegating responsibility. Leonard Marshall points over to Pepper Johnson and say, well, I got him on the run, you finish him off. 49ers now sprint to the line of scrimmage, and here comes Steve Young as they try to trick the Giants on fourth down and three. They did. The Giants had their punt return unit in there. They sent Raffman in motion, and that is actually Helton, the punter, who comes up to the line of scrimmage as they try to draw the Giants offside, but it doesn't work. It is Helton on a preset play where you're just trying to get the opposition to jump when you have less than five yards yeah, of course for the first and it doesn't work five yard penalty is not going to hurt anything they'll back them up because they were at the line of scrimmage about the 39 yard line the giants were even saying that to parcells what do you want to do you want to decline it there's montana meanwhile being worked on and parcells decides they will back them up another five montana's missed a couple of games a season with various ailments. They had a, an injured shoulder, or rather an injured elbow, early in the year. Missed two and a half games, in fact. Missed the Dallas game and the Jets game. Right elbow and then a left knee and now sore ribs. And they uh, played in only half of their victory over New England. Flag goes down as Helton kick. A fair catch is called for, but Megan lets it bounce. And it does go into the end zone. And let's see about the penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Call made by the line judge, Ron D'Souza. Motion penalty against San Francisco, and it will be declined. Motion, number 40, offense, penalty is declined. We don't want that over. Giants will get it at the 20-yard line. Johnny Jackson backing up, and you'll see him. There he is. He really kind of moves on the snap of the ball. Chuck Thomas, the center, picks that ball up and delays a little bit, but of no consequence, it's declined anyway. Francisco, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. Joe Montana, who had to come out on the 49ers last series, up and walking around as we look down from the Goodyear of Lund, Columbia. Charles Russell at the helm tonight. On a sparkling night in the city by the bay, where the 49ers lead by seven, and the Giants have the ball at the 20, and Roussan and Anderson are in the game back of Sims. And here's only the third carry of the night for Anderson, who takes it out to the 24-yard line. 
Meanwhile, let's take a look at Montana's block. And remember, earlier, he was buried by Gary Reason. And that could have created some problems for the ribs as well. And then came this. And, of course, he came into the game with sore ribs. There he is, bottom of the screen, the right side. Now, he goes into Banks, gets Banks on the ground, but Banks kind of rolls over him. And Montana had to leave the field. Another angle of it. Just it's a good block. He got, his, he got his body in there and got through the arms of Banks. Gets my vote for best block by a quarterback. <laughs> Second down and six for New York from the 24-yard line. The Sims fires over the middle. Moat juggles it, and it's nearly picked off by Lott. Well, that's what the Giants have been looking for. That's what they came into the game trying to do is get Moat in the seam of the 49ers' deep zone defense. And he was right there, a little high maybe, but one he should have had. Jim Burt that time. I don't know if you noticed. Let's take a look at him and nose that. He crawls all the way to Phil Sims and ends up with a hand on the ankle. He finally gets in there and grabs the ankle of Sims, and Sims kind of kicked off his hand. Third and six from the 24. Sims has it batted back into his own hands and then throws, and the catch is made, but a flag is down as Sims had already, in effect, made the completion That's and two illegal forward pass passes. exactly and Ronnie Lott buries Odessa or Ronnie Lott was the guy the play. yep that's two forward passes and mm -hmm. Eric Wright was the that's guy illegal. who buried Odessa Turner as Lott came in and took care of Sims. That's the quarterback lost it down the previous spot fourth down Ronnie Lott right up the seam, no one even touching him. Now, Phil just did not have the presence. He knows you can't do this, but he spots Odessa Turner, who was wide open down the field, and I guess the temptation was just too much, but Turner also took a tremendous shot, and he is still prostrate at the middle of the field, hit by Eric Wright. They continue to work on Odessa Turner. And the Giants will punt when we come back as we take one more look at the hit. As we come back, Odessa Turner helped to the uh, far side for the Giants. That went off uh, basically under his own power, and Sean Landetta to punt. And he boots it from the 15-yard line, and it's a low end over end kick with Don Griffin back, and he lets it bounce, and the Giants have to down it at the 42, and we've got another flag down back at the 27-yard line. And it's against the 49ers. Hmm. It was fourth and six. At the 24-yard line. Holding 58 on the receiving team after the ball is kicked. All right. Post First possession down. foul. Oh, post the ball. receiving team will keep the ball. Uh, post uh -huh. possession. Big difference right there. Big difference. <laughs> Major difference. <laughs> If that would have been before automatic. the 49ers had possession, that mm -hmm. would have been an automatic first down mm -hmm. for New York. As it was, it was a very poor punt by Landetta. And the 49ers are going to take over their own 42-yard line. 34-yard kick. Meanwhile, updating the, the vote. I wonder if these people are voting on announcers acumen. These are best announcers plays. Dan said he, <laughs> quite humbly a moment ago, I only want to finish a strong second. <laughs> Bearing down on stable. I, I either wanted to win or finish last. <laughs> With the juice on top by a mile. The penalty assessed as Montana comes back into the game. The penalty assessed from the spot the Giants downed the punch. So a 10-yard penalty puts it back to the 32-yard line. And Joe, off the play fake, sets up the screen. Roger Craig slips one tackle, and then is brought down at the 37-yard line from behind by Eric Howard. It'll be second and five. Banks also in on the play. Joe Montana tonight has thrown only two incomplete passes, so he's in the 90s tonight. He is 72% for the season, which is unbelievable. 22 touchdowns and four interceptions. 
came into the night, what, with a 115.5 rating? There's the, the record right there. Kenny Anderson did that in the strike year, 1982, 70.6. And Sammy Baugh, 44 years ago. And Baugh played in eight games that year. Here's Craig on second and six, coming to the outside and taken down by Collins and Johnson at the 40-yard line, short of the first by about a yard, yard and a half. And third down upcoming with under two minutes to play in the third period. So Montana getting the sign from the 49er bench. Meanwhile, here are the possessions. The 49ers, the first four possessions resulting in scores. And the last four, two fumbles, two punts. This drive starting at the 32, third down and one. Rathman, and that was a long one. He has to get to the 42-yard line and does not appear to have it. He needs a real friendly spot to get this first down. And I don't believe he's close. I mean, he needs an up-with-people spot. <laughs> Good short yardage play by the Giants. You saw that the 49ers trying to drive the Giants off the ball were just totally unsuccessful. All the penetration belonged to New York, and Pepper Johnson leading the charge. Bill Parcells uh, with Johnson as he awaits his team to regain possession. They're down by seven. They have scored the only points of the third quarter. That's Dave Meggett standing back at his 18-yard line. Barry Hilton, who missed a lot of practice time this week with back spasms, takes the snap, gets the kick away. Sends Meggett to the far side at the 20. And the rookie brings it back out to the 34-yard line. And a little contact after the play, and a flag is down. It seems to be par for the course uh, following uh, returns tonight, and this time the penalty is against New York. <laughs> Who was it that time? Mm. Bro, sure that was at that time? <laughs> Illegal block in the back, number 99, on the run, 10 yards, first down. Steve Diossi. So the Giants, down by seven. A lot of people trying to compare the Giants of 89 to 86. Parcells won't have any of that. In fact, if you ask Parcells to compare the, the 89 to 86, it's like saying that compare a William Goldman to William Shakespeare. He looks at you like you're crazy. <laughs> From the 24-yard line, he just tries to deflect all of the comparisons. From the 24-yard line, Sims has it knocked down by Holt, and Pierce Holt involved again. Big first half, big play here. Oh, Holt having a big night, but not as big as Al. <laughs> again, Pierce Holt, like Riesenberg just stands him up. Dan pointed out a while ago, sometimes they're better off if you let him beat you a little bit and take him take him one way or the other and that time hold that nowhere to go he just went up in the air and blocked it he was something <laughs> you guys are too frank we're in the presence of greatness and i'm not talking about joe montana <laughs> second and ten from the 24 yard line sim firing the catch is made at the 40 yard line by manual for a first down with that much time left in the third period. And this is the point in time, as we probably saw the last play of period number three, uh, where if you're a 49er fan, you've got to be a little uneasy right now. As well as your club has played, uh, you're watching the night that Joe Montana is having, and here you go into the fourth quarter, only leading by seven points, and the Giants have the ball and moving. End of three, ABC's Monday Night Football returns after this from our ABC station. Good ball game. Well, we need a break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the catacombs, Ed DeBartolo, who owns the 49ers. And uh, there's a man who, who took over in the late 70s, has watched his team win three Super Bowls, and right now they'd be favored to make it four. And I'm sure that he has that uneasy feeling I was talking about. You'd think the 49ers would have put this one away, and the Giants won't quit. 
Here's Carson making the catch in a four-yard gain and popped by Matt Millen out of the 44-yard line as we begin the fourth quarter. Matt Millen, you saw DeBartolo a moment ago. He was the one that came up with the zeros to get Matt Millen a pro bowler with the Raiders a year ago and turned loose right before the start of the season. He became extremely valuable when Jim Farnhorst injured his right foot and he went down. Ricky Allison was lost in training camp. And Millen is a starter and a big play man now for the 49ers. Well, Haley and Romanowski are trying to figure out which side of the ball to get on. Second and five, Sims shoots it out to Otis Anderson, and Anderson cannot get around Bill Romanowski. Take a look at the numbers now through the first three quarters of play. You can see that uh, the Giants that time had a had a good third quarter, time of possession still considerably in favor of the 49ers, but all in all, relatively even. Only 20 yards separating the two, and the turnovers have evened out. Third and four at the 46-yard line. Crowd exhorting the 49ers defense. Ingram in motion. And a first down as Meggett makes the catch and takes it to the San Francisco 45, tackled by Brooks. The little man giving big plays to the Giants tonight. Makes the screen pass, 62 for the touchdown. This is exactly what Parcells wanted from Meggett as he begins to expand his playing time. In the early part of the year, up until last week, as a matter of fact, he'd come in only on third down, the sure pass. Now he's playing on first down and in all situations. First down, he shoots it out to Meggett, and Meggett swings to the outside, inside the 40, and Meggett close to a first down and has it out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Well, the one thing Bill Parcells told us was that we need big games from Zeke Moat. We need a big game from David Meggett. And the reason I want to get the ball to Meggett is that he'll make the first guy miss. And the first guy here is Bill Romanowski, who just doesn't have the foot speed to catch up to Meggett. And... This guy has just burst upon the scene in New York. Not only as a receiver, but his total yardage uh, with kickoff returns and punt returns. Running the look at, look at 170 yards so far in this game for this talented rookie. He was averaging 110 a game, good enough for eighth in the league coming in. On first down from the 35, going deep and throwing it a little bit behind Ingram. Covered on the play by Eric Wright. And Pollard back to cover on the play and just thrown over the, the top of his head and couldn't quite twist around to make the catch. Frank, a lot of times you'll see the quarterback throw it over to the outside because he sees the safety coming over from the inside. And that time Phil Sims saw Ronnie Lott, and that's what forced him to throw the ball away. Throw it back over the outside shoulder, keeping it away from... The free safety was moving over from in the middle, but that's superb, fine coverage. Oh, superb coverage. Superb coverage by Pollard. Couldn't have been played better. Second and ten. Sim goes down at the 37, and a flag goes down. He gets hit by Stubbs and Roberts. And Sims is shaken up. Face mask. And Sims must be hurt. He must have let out some sort of a moan or a cry or something because instantly Bart Oates was waving to the sidelines. And imagine what he's thinking. Five yard face mask foul, 96 defense. Well, that's Daniel Stubbs who continues his bad streak of, of penalties. Last week uh, in their game, he had just about as bad a week as a guy could have, a bad a game as a guy could have penalty-wise, and oh. no question. And it looks like the thumb uh, you know, it's impossible to speculate, but that thumb went clear inside the face mask and also, of Phil Sims, and I, you hope he didn't get it in the eye. Dan Stubbs, number 96, who last week negated an interception return for a touchdown by Chet Brooks by lining up in the neutral zone. You know, Dan, his right foot was also trapped as he went down, and they're looking at the ankle and the knee. Now, both of which are already tender for Phil Sims. Watch the right knee as Roberts comes in. Face mask, of course, but if you look, the right knee just buckles. 
under the weight of Roberts. This will give us a, a little better look, and you can see the, the right knee definitely is caved in a little bit. Bill was lucky to be able to get his legs up off the turf. But there's no what, doubt that he's in pain. At that moment, he let out a cry, and it was when Bart Oates instantly back into the sidelines to get some medical assistance in. You can see that Phil, Phil's reluctant to even take a step. And Donnie Barnes, the trainer in the blue warm-up, the trainer for the Giants, and of course Dr. Russell Warren, is back out on the field again. Well, no one has ever questioned the pain tolerance of number 11, nor the ability of Jeff Hostetler. Now you and I, you know, we exchanged words with Hostetler, uh, uh, reminding him of, of his game with Minnesota, and uh, you, you only play on Monday nights, and lo and behold, how prophetic that was. Yep, I said, you, you and Kubiak, he changes things a little bit. He can move around back there. He'll give you a, a good effort scrambling. Well, last week we saw the sub quarterback Gary Kubiak have a big night, lead Denver to a win. Here comes Hostetler on second down. And what do you do? Seven. New quarterback, you blitz him. Hostetler's changing the play as he reads the blitz. And Meggett's calling out the uh, the change as he stays in the block. And Hostetler nearly gets sacked and then is in the grasp and control at the 38 yard line of Pierce Holt. That's a horrible rule. Mm. <laughs> So that's in effect a sack back at the 38-yard line. It is. In an effort to preserve quarterbacks, however. Yeah, I know, but it's it's grasp and control. Just ugly. Are you really controlling a guy if he completes the pass? Here's Jeff Hostetler coming out, Pierce Holt. And I mean, that's a completed pass. I mean, I'm sorry. I, that, if that's if that's a good call under the rule, then that's an ugly rule. And talking about a guy who's back in, mm -hmm. Phil Sims returns. Yeah. Oh man. I mean that's. Yeah. I mean the guy makes a great play. Hosteller makes a great play getting rid of the ball, and it's a sack. If Tarkenton played under these rules, he'd never have had a completion. No. Instead of the most in history. Timeout. Sims back in. Timeout. Giants. 11:54 to go. talk about collector's items worth nothing. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Well, they, I mean, all of them, you know. I mean, There's one of you in there. I know it. That's what I mean. Worth zero. <laughs> the last vestiges of Halloween Indianapolis 1988. It's third down and 14 for the Giants with Sims back in the game at the 39. Green... Three-man rush, and it's made at the 20-yard line by Ingram, and a huge first down. And what a catch. What a lead by Phil Sims, and what, boy, that's stretching for the ball. Mark Ingram only at 5'10", needed every inch of it there. 49ers play that man-for-man -man up short with their cornerbacks, and they drop deep in the zone, and Phil Sims splits the zone. Ingram reads it, gets right around in between the deep man and the up man and Sam zipped it in great catch first and ten Giants at the 18 yard line Sims throwing for Manuel picked off at the one yard line by Chet Brooks and a flag down after the play Maurice Carthen grabbed the face mask and it will come out beyond the 14 as well and this time, Chet Brooks gets to keep the interception. <laughs> the 49er defense, they play man-for-man -man on the corner. Five-yard face mask foul, number 44 defense. Five yards. It was First Pollard. Time. Well, you're in, that two deep, you're in that two-deep zone, and Sims never saw Chet Brooks. No, Brooks and Ronnie Lott playing the safety position back there, each taking a half of the field. Sims reads the man-for-man. And the left side of the field belongs to Brooks. And he just reads Sims all the way and steps right in front of the receiver. Good play by Chet Brooks. As Dan mentioned, he gets to keep it. Last week, Daniel Stubbs lined up offside, and that negated a 94-yard interception return. And was the pivotal play in a game won by Green Bay because they cashed it in. Catch is made out at the 30-yard line by Mike Wilson. 
he's kind of a forgotten man. He's in his ninth year, but when you have Rice and Taylor and, of course, in years past, people like Solomon and Ronaldo Nehemiah was here as well. Mike Wilson just keeps plodding along. Boy, to think the Giants were that close to tying this game up. But again, the 49ers stiffened and came up with another big play defensively. Now it's a gut job for the Giants' defense to get it back. 10.30 to go. Rathman. And he picks up close to five, and we've got another flag as well. This one's thrown by the umpire, which is normally holding, and that's what it is. Did you ever get called for, for holding by anybody other than the umpire? Yeah, you get it from the guys working the sidelines. You'll get it from the side judge and head linesman. Offense, 10 yards, first down. That's Jesse Cipolo, the center. I should have said often. Do you, do you, ha, were you called? Not often. 90% uh, of the... Yeah. He'll only call the... The guys on the sidelines will only call the tackle mm -hmm. to that side. Uh, predominantly, it's the umpire who, who makes probably 80% of the calls. The referee is responsible for looking at the right tackle, and he'll, he'll throw it every now and then. Mm -hmm. First and 20 from the 21-yard line. Montana throwing and a little bit behind the tight end, Brent Jones. One of his rare incompletions tonight. He was covered on the play by, by Mark Collins. One of the few bad tosses we've seen on the part of Montana, and had he led Jones, Jones could have picked up the first down. He was that open. Next week, uh, the Giants, of course, go home to face Philadelphia. You talk about a short week. They get back in the wee hours tomorrow morning. Bill Parcell saying yesterday he may, he may give them until Thursday off. Well, a short week against the team that played on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I mean, a short week against the team that's had the longest of weeks. Ten days to get ready. Second and 20. Montana over the middle. That's uh, Wilson again. He loses the ball. And three Giants are there. And Collins has it at the 30-yard line. And finally, we get an indication from an official that it does belong to New York. And I think Carl Banks is the giant that came in and stripped the ball. And it's Collins who is at the bottom of that pile who has the football. And New York will have it at the 30-yard line. Montana, with a lot of time, could have gone up on the second and extremely long yardage and you're right Dan it was Banks who again hammered that big right hand in and stripped the ball from Mike Wilson but the 49ers have gone into a bit of a shell as opposed to their offense we watched in the first half well you can't say Carl Banks isn't doing everything he can do tonight for the Giants and Lawrence Taylor's absent mm -hmm. causing two fumbles with that big right hand Cross goes in motion from the 30 yard line Sims throws over the middle. Otis Anderson takes it down to the 22. Tackled by Holt. It'll be second and two. 9.40 to play. 49ers ahead by seven. At one point, they led 24 to seven. It's now 24-17. Regardless of who wins or who loses this game, you have to admire the tenacity of Bill Parcells and his Giants team. I mean, they have suffered setback after setback and really have been facing an awesome 49er offense tonight, but, I mean, they are right here. Second and one, and it's a long one, and it's close as Anderson takes the ball to the 20-yard line. If he got it to the strike, that's good enough. And it is. First down, so Candlestick Park quiet right now, relatively quiet. Again, the 49ers unbeaten on the road, 6-0. 1-0 at Stanford. They had to play against Stanford right after the earthquake. So they got Candlestick ready for action again. And only 2-2 two, two here. Ingram is put right with a safety man. Chet Brooks covering him. Sims. Throwing, throwing it out of the end zone, intended for Mark Ingram. Second down. This extremely young and, in some ways, inexperienced offensive line of the New York Giants is, is, is playing just an outstanding game tonight. 
Riesenberg and Moore and Oates and Roberts and Elliott, uh, uh, by and large, have, have done an effective job of controlling the 49ers up front, Frank. I mean, it's a group that's, that's, that's really developed and grown as the season has gone along, and uh, they're, they're playing well tonight. You go across the line, you look at them, number one, they were drafted number one, number two. And pass, all pro from the USA, or the, AFC, or the old AFL, changing their role tonight through pass blocking. Here comes Sims' 43rd pass of the night, and the catch is made by Manuel at the 10-yard line, and uh, very close to a first down. Pollard covering on the play. Sims is up and over 300 yards for the evening. This looks like this is going to take a measurement. Mm -hmm. So an official's time here, 8.20 on the clock. If you do go across that line, Dan, you were talking about as we see Manuel. He had the yardage, and he was pressured by Pollard, who gave him good coverage and took him back, but they'll mark the progress. It's going to be very close. But it's just going to be second down if he doesn't make it. That's almost a situation where we almost hope you don't make it. Exactly. <laughs> if you have a free one, that's right. right in zone with it. Now you got to get it in from about as far away as you can be on first and goal. That's one of those where you're not all that upset if you're only a foot short of the first down. A little pe people come out now for the Giants. Maggot, Ingram, Manuel, and the big folks come in, the two tight ends. They send Baker, split to the left. They put Ingram in motion. And give the ball to Otis Anderson. And Anderson fights his way down to the seven-yard line. Jeff Brooks comes up to make the hit. Otis Jerome Anderson. What a job he has done for the New York Giants this year. He's gone over 9,000 yards in his career here in the National Football League. The former number one draft choice of the then St. Louis Cardinals. And... Yeah, the possibility little. of getting a thousand yards this year. Thanks a little, Dan, with Joe Morris in the last three years. And when Joe Morris was hurt this year, he really took up the slack. Second and goal. Quick drop by Sims, and he throws, and it's batted away on oh, a great yeah. play by Don Griffin. Intended for Baker. And Don Griffin really now among the elite cornerbacks in the league, proving it week after week in his fourth year at a Middle Tennessee State. Well, these 49er corners play the receiver. Then when they sense that the receiver is giving them an indication the ball is in the air, they turn to play the ball. And there it is. Put it in the training film, in the textbooks. That is exactly how it's supposed to be done. Notice the left hand feeling the receiver, knowing exactly where Manuel is, where Baker is, rather, and then coming back and making the play. Phil Simms thinks he might have a touchdown. Thought he had it. Third and goal. Baker left. Ingram in motion from the right side. Sims flush. Throws on the run. And throws it behind. An incomplete intended for Cross. And Brooks is saying it should be offensive interference. He's not, he's not, it's one of the rare times you'll see the defensive back in a situation like that really plead his case. Both the tight ends were in the pattern, but Moat was knocked off by the linebacker. Lacrosse tries to reach back inside, and again, he loses his footing. We've seen a lot of that tonight. Look at that chunk of sod that came up. They're flying up. Meanwhile, the Giants are going for it. They will not attempt the field goal, which will put them within four. There's the divot. It's fourth and goal. Turner in the game to the left. Ingram to the right. Sims for Turner. Touchdown over Griffin. He came right back with it. I mean, the play that Gr Griffin made a few moments ago was a brilliant play to knock the ball away from Baker. You can't make that all night long. They come back and they get man for man with Odessa Turner. That's exactly what they want. Turner goes six foot three, good athlete against a six foot Don Don Griffin, and we get the touchdown for the Giants. Well, I don't know that a quarterback could throw this ball any better. And Phil Sims drops this one over the corner. Look at that throw by Phil mm. Sims and Bjorn Nitmo, who has put the excitement back in just every kick for the Giants, faces a big one. And comes through with 7.06 to play. And I spoke earlier about that uneasy feeling if you're following the 49ers, if they're your team. Lo and behold, they find themselves tied 
7.06 left in the fourth quarter, and Frank, that's just, that's a perfect throw. And a great pattern by the six foot three Turner. Griffin didn't even look back at the ball. He knew he was beat to the outside. And we've got a tied football game with seven minutes remaining. In New York or in San Francisco, or in the Meadowlands to be precise, or here, as Nitmo kicks off. Nitmo hung that up high into the three yard line. Flagler. And you know, we, we sung the phrases of uh, the 49ers so often early in this game, but here are the Giants. They lose Lawrence Taylor. They're down by 17 points. They're on their way to maybe, maybe being down by more and right back in it. Well, they stayed in there as we talked about earlier. They were down 17 points in 1986. They came back to win that 21-17. I'm sure that at halftime, Parcells was reminding a lot of the young Giants who weren't here that they could do it. Hasn't that been the trademark, though, of what we've been seeing all season long? It's a team that's having to overcome some sort of a handicap does i mean whether it's kubiak or or frank reich or, or or whomever the hero turns out to be we've seen it all year first and ten from the 18 montana has to throw it away after uh, initially his intended receiver was covered throwing it out of bounds at second down and 10 brent jones nearest to the area covered by mark collins there are a lot of philadelphia eagles and fans are looking on tonight with the victory, the Giants could come in with a two-game lead next week to play them. And then the Giants will face Denver after that. Home for Dallas and home for the Raiders. While Philadelphia has the Giants. And then they have Dallas, New Orleans, and then they're home for Phoenix. Second and ten. Montana buying time off the fake. Has a lot of room to run. And Joe Montana is steps out of bounds at the 35 after picking up a first down and that is something he has done so very often this season montana scrambling and running and he was averaging five yards a rush coming into the game tonight almost 200 yards rushing coming into tonight 179 i believe it was at a five yard average he has now run for a first down in each of the last 10 games he has played he's so cerebral he he runs so judiciously i mean he knows and he comes out of, he's not going to run unless he can pick up the first down, get good yardage out of it, or he'll dump it off, or he'll find a receiver. First and ten from the 35. This is Craig. This, of course, is a time when uh, the 49ers would love to really get their running game in gear and take a lot of time off that clock, which is now down to 6.30 to play. And there is no New York Giant trying harder both to make a play or to cheer his team on right now than, than Pepper Johnson. Again, at the end of that play, you you got to look at him trying to exhort his team on. Gary Reason's there, the other inside linebacker. Johnny Cook's having to play now on the outside in the spot vacated by Lawrence Taylor. Craig, who is lined up wide in motion. And Montana rolling and throwing, and does Rice make the uh, catch? Oh, boy. <laughs> of course he does. Why even ask? Well, it was Rice getting himself locked with Mark Collins, and Mark Collins had to respect the deep threat of Rice. He played, played him very close, and it was just a great effort on the part of Rice to use the sideline. Montana reads it with him. That's not bad position and by Collins. Oh, oh boy. That that's, great. Just, that's just beautiful. Beautiful. And of course, how many quarterbacks can throw and uh, on the run as well as Montana? Not many. First and ten from the 46. Here's Rathman that finds a nice little hole, but it closes in a hurry. He gets to the 49, tackled by Banks. You'd be hard pressed to find an offensive team that that works this type of situation. Here we are, uh, five uh, minutes and change left in the fourth quarter, a tie ball game. You'd be hard pressed to come up with an offensive team that that operates with more confidence uh, than the 49ers do. Uh, you know that that stems from Joe Montana. It also stems from the fact that they've done it so often before. I mean, all the way back to the drive in the Super Bowl last year. I mean. This is just another day at the office for this mm -hmm. offensive team. Mm -hmm. A pressure situation. They're as cool as can be. Most of the time they come through, but they didn't last week against Green Bay at the end. Second down and seven. Montana throws for Rice, and he makes the catch, and he spun out of bounds at the 32-yard line. He is amazing. I'll tell you, where do you go, though, when it is pressure? You go to a man who's on his way to Canton, Ohio, Jerry Rice. Two key interceptions, both for first downs as the drive.
continues, and now Rice is over 100 yards. Remember what Bill Parcells told us about Jerry Rice, about his, uh, he thinks one of his finest attributes is his stamina. Uh, the longer the game goes on, uh, the stronger he becomes. He's even uh, running faster than maybe he did in the first quarter, and uh, maybe that's why he's getting some separation now between himself and some of the giant defenders. Seven catches tonight for Rice. Here's Craig, and he runs right into Gary Reasons. And the clock is now down to the five-minute mark. As much as the 49ers would like to run the football, I think they've almost conceded they can. But if you're going to throw the football, you've got to keep that defense honest by running it occasionally. Here's Reasons, reading it, playing it well. Craig tries to break it back against the grain and right into the shoulder pads of Reasons. Well, he adhered to the number one rule of an inside linebacker. Don't over-pursue. Play it inside out. That's exactly what he did. Second and 11 from the 33-yard line. And Montana going deep for Rice. And this time, Rice can't one-handed. And a step on Collins. Good coverage that time, though, all things considered. Uh, he had a step on him, but it had to be a perfect throw for that to be a completion. Mark Collins How could blew you play? all over Rice. How could you play cornerback against the 49ers and not look up at the clock after every play and say, isn't this thing over yet? <laughs> I mean, how many more times do I have to try to stay with this guy? I mean, I, I can't believe that if you're a cornerback, you don't stare at that huddle, hoping that Jerry Rice breaks to the other side of the field. You wouldn't be human if you didn't think that. Even Neon Dion will run into Rice next week. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now Sheldon White, top of your screen on Jerry Rice, but he'll get help from the inside. They won't leave him out there alone. Third down and 11. And Montana comes back the other way, and nobody remotely in the area. And you better say that again. Yeah, well, Mike Barber, who was just activated, ran uh, into the end zone, and Montana thought he was running an out pattern. And that's uh, the problem you have when you've got a guy playing in his first game, Barber, the rookie out of Marshall. Mm. I guess it activated this past week. Well, maybe it was Montana's fault. <laughs> yeah, that's what Barber... Good, good luck getting saying. anyone to believe that. Meanwhile, a 51-yard attempt coming up right now. Mike Coker, his longest this season is 47. These are also the kind you block, those long ones. Flag is down. It is no good. It had the distance, but was wide to the left. And the line judge will make the call Outside. against the Giants. Defense, lined up in the neutral zone. It will not be a first oh, down, no. however. Right on the end of the line. I didn't get his number. Didn't get his number, he said. I think it might be Renee Thompson. He's the guy to this side. Mm -hmm. This is Thompson right here, number 21, and it appears that his hand is farther out here than anyone else, at least on this side. Renee Thompson, number 21. So... Kofor gets another shot. And a big difference from 37 yards and 51. This one will be spotted at about the 36-yard well, line. It better be a 46-yard attempt if the last one was a 51. Yep. Well, give or take a <laughs> half a yard here. This well, is actually will go into the books as a 45-yard uh, to the line of scrimmage where they'll put it down. It's just outside the 35. Kofor puts it down. And this time the kick is truer and good. Not only the difference in the distance, but psychologically, particularly off the natural surface. Well, last week the 49ers were victimized by lining up in the neutral zone. This week it works in their favor. It's the New York Giants that make the mistake and give their opponents another chance. What goes round comes around, and Mike Cooper getting a chance to do it again leaves no doubt. Plenty long and plenty straight. 4-12 to play. San Francisco by a week. Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff, and this game has uh, very much lived up to the hype and everybody's expectations. 27 to 24, San Francisco, 4-12 to go, looking ahead. The Giants have two of their timeouts remaining. And Mike Cooper 
with a deep kick. A yard in the end zone. It's Ingram. And he comes out to about the 22-yard line. And so the Giants will begin the drive from that spot. Well, here's where the Giants really have to rely upon Phil Sims to do exactly what he's been doing a majority of the time tonight. Working the short to intermediate passing game, not really going for the big play. With four minutes and two timeouts left, the Giants have plenty of time to go down the field. You can see the good night, 326 yards. There's time to be patient for the Giants. From the 22-yard line. Sims begins by throwing an out pattern that's out of bounds, intended for Manuel. You know, the funny thing, it's worth repeating again, with the, each team having a two-game lead at the moment, the loser has only a one-game lead, but both teams are in similar situations. The Giants, where they will lose tonight and lose to Philadelphia next week, tied with the Eagles, but really behind them, head-to-head, -head, these are little loss twice. 49ers in the same boat, these would be a game in front of the Rams, but if the Rams were to beat them in two weeks, the Rams would have won both head-to-head -head meetings and, in essence, be in first place. Second and ten, and Sims has to step up and gets it picked off by Eric Wright. Oh, wow. Phil Sims will look at that on film and kick himself time and time again, Frank, for not running with the ball. In any other situation, probably, at any other time, but Phil Sims has gone out of this game with a bad ankle. He came in with a bad ankle. You're exactly right, though. This could be the year on the line here. And an errant throw right into the arms of Eric Wright. Well, he's trying to get the ball to David Meggett. Now watch Phil. He's going to break to his left. He sees Meggett, and he launches the ball. And, and, and Meggett, I guess Phil Sims is upset with Meggett for not stopping, turning back, facing the quarterback, and giving him a target. Meggett continued to run downfield and really wasn't in a position to help Sims. Phil's mad at Meggett, mad at himself. Not that easy to do. From the 17-yard line, this is Roger Craig. You know, it's kind of funny. So many of the 49ers, the household names as uh, Cooks and McIntyre get into it for the moment. But Eric Wright is one of those who has been here for all of the Super Bowl championships. That's the 18th career interception for Eric Wright, and about as big as they come. Well, you look back at that 81 draft for the 49ers and think that number one was Ronnie Lott. And the second round choice was Eric Wright. That's uh, <laughs> pretty productive. He's trying to strengthen the secondary. And... What a pain on Phil's face. He knew he had thrown that one away. Well, now the onus is squarely on the shoulders of this defensive team. They must at least keep the 49ers to three. Here's Rathman swinging to the outside. Takes it down to the 13. Well, uh, we have a lot of isolates on coaches, and here's one on the owner, huh? <laughs> a whole lot of hugging going yep. on. <laughs> Replay that. Some smooching and bussing as well. <laughs> 49ers with third and seven, and the clock ticking down. Again, the Giants can stop the clock twice. Since keeping warm on the far side. And they have the two-minute warning. Yep. If you can believe that Joe Montana will take that 30-second clock right down to the minimum. Third and seven, and Montana is able to get it off to Rathman. He has the first down to the three-yard line. How did he ever get it off with Banks blitzing? And wouldn't it be Carl Banks? First thing that comes to my mind, last year, Randall Cunningham, Carl Banks making the play on Cunningham, having to get up, saying, how in the world did he complete this pass? And here he is in exactly the same situation with Joe Montana. Down goes Montana, and he leaves the field. He was shaken up. He has left before, and it could be that he's just taking advantage of the two-minute warning, which he is, but he was holding his ribs. He knelt down on one knee as he came to the sidelines, and what a performance he is putting on tonight. And Carl Banks is saying, you have to be kidding me. First and goal. Jays of Randall, cutting out. If I 
Two minutes to go, and the 49ers have a first and goal at the three-yard line as they try to salt this one away. The Giants can stop the clock twice. But what they really have to do is stop the 49ers, period. And they give it to Raffman, and now we'll see if New York wants to take a timeout. They're really in no man's land here, the Giants are, and they, they have to stop the clock. And Parcells now looking in the face of having to fly back to New York. And again, they get there in the wee hours. Yesterday, he was uncertain what he would do. He was uh, toying with the idea of having them not come in until Thursday, which really gives them two full days to prepare for Philadelphia because you kind of do a walkthrough on Saturday. Saturday. Well, the situation keeping in mind all the way along that Philadelphia played on Thanksgiving Day. They, of course, returned that night. They've been back in Philadelphia since Friday. They've had a long rest, and the Giants are going to have over 100 hours difference in times, plus the trip back to New York. You know, the situation at hand, though, hasn't changed uh, for New York defensively. They've got to keep San Francisco out of the end zone. They've got, of course, a field goal situation to where they're only trailing by six points, and they will get the ball back. Uh, granted, uh, with no timeouts and, and not a whole lot of time, but it's still critical. It just, you, you, you just can't let them in the end zone. How often have you seen Montana come on a rollout out of this situation? Second and goal. Here's Rice in motion. And Rathman takes it to the one-yard line, and now the Giants have to spend their final timeout with 147. And uh, we can tell you that next week we go up north. The two teams going in different directions. I mean, really different directions. Buffalo coming off that big win against Cincinnati yesterday. Kelly and you'll see uh, Andre Reed and Thurman Thomas against the Seattle Seahawks, who have just about hit rock bottom. And we'll be at the Kingdom. Meanwhile, we can tell you about the final vote. And there it is. O.J. wins it as we expected, and Deerdorf uh, comes in for the show money. Solid second. Well, the only, uh, if you saw that clip at halftime, the only thing uh, of historic import about that was uh, that was against the Miami Dolphins back in 1972, their undefeated season. So I'm uh, in some ways a part of history. I could defend you uh, at 13 years, eight Pro Bowls, whatever it was. Yeah, it was that's all we could find. No, uh, <laughs> uh, there, there was better things out there, but... Uh, if I can undefend him, Dan made 30 calls, Debbie 116, Christian 104. <laughs> Yeah, and Bo Schimbeckler a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not sure about that. <laughs> Third and goal from the two. And here's Craig trying to vault into the end zone. There's no signal yet. And the Giants saying, get up, get up, as if the 49ers are going to help them get up. And they won't. And they'll take that clock right down to the end. It is short. And it's fourth down, and the 49ers, with Montana looking over toward the bench, saying to Seifert, do you want a timeout? And Georgia saying, no way, pal. No, you don't want a timeout. Uh, but you want to you kick want to a field goal. Well, I mean, you know, why, why run the risk of not getting in and being able to be tied by a field goal? Now the Giants, so the 49ers, are saying, call that timeout. And they call it, and the Giants are saying they called it after the play clock had expired. And let's see what McElwee says. Bad fire drill on the sidelines yeah. of the 49ers. They weren't quite sure what they wanted to do. At first, first, they're saying no. Then what they were saying is let the play clock run all the way down. Well, there's no flag on the field. Time out, San Francisco. Before the play clock ran out. Yeah, I mean, that's the back judge's responsibility to... Uh, to go ahead and, and, and look at that clock, and uh, no flag on the field means that uh, uh, he granted them the timeout before the play, co play clock expires. Well, let's uh, let's play quarterback here. What do you do? I mean, you're George Seifert. I mean, I kick the field goal. I sure. kick the field goal the only way and make them have a be, touchdown to win. That's right. Be to make a touchdown. The other thought, of course, on the part of Seifert. Defensive coordinator all of mm -hmm. his career is well, we, we can leave him down here if we don't get the touchdown. If we get the touchdown from the foot out, this game is history. But, but if, if you we don't, don't get leave the touchdown, down here. you leave the uh, you know you, you leave the chance that a field goal could tie you. <laughs> On another plane, there's a five and a half point spread in this game, which has a few people interested at the moment as well. Fourth. 
Fourth and goal, and they're going for it. Rice in motion. And Rathman vaults in for the touchdown. When it works, it's a good call. And the 49ers lay claim to the best team in football. There will be some argument in Denver, but the 49ers and their followers are saying we're the ones. And they did sag in the third quarter through much of the fourth quarter. And like a good championship team, they got it back together when they had to have it. Hey, that's, that's tremendous defense by the New York Giants. There's no question Rathman crossed the plane with the football, but he didn't cross it by more than six inches. That's, that's excellent goal line defense by the Giants. Meeting him in the air, driving him back. He just got it a couple inches farther than the Giants wanted. Colford attack on the extra point, and that is good. That is Rathman's first rushing touchdown of the season. There he is. Well, in Bill Parcells' overall scheme of things, he said all along, it's not all that important. We'd like to win it. But what we have to do, we have to go back and we have to beat Philadelphia. We've got to beat Dallas. Well, you know what his team did tonight, Frank, that he's got to be pleased with is the way they fought back. They were on the verge of getting, uh, being pushed right out into San Francisco exactly. Bay, losing Lawrence Taylor early. And they, uh, without, you're right, without LT, and then uh, with some heroics from guys like Meggett and Phil Sims and an offensive line that hung in there, they really, and a defensive played extremely well in the second half. The Giants showed some, uh, showed some real moxie. There it is, Eagles versus the Giants, Sunday in the Meadowlands. Uh, Eagles won it, or the Eagles played Thanksgiving Day, Giants tonight. There it is, uh, Steve Hurd, uh, putting all of the facts and figures into uh, the old updated Univac system. Into a blender. <laughs> to come up with this one. Yeah. A hundred one hour difference in preparation time. Univac blender. <laughs> the, uh, 101 Dalmatians. Uh, there is Lawrence Taylor on the sidelines. The, it was scary for a moment. They took him off in the cart. The big Gave question now at halftime, and uh, he was walking around and no x-ray, so it must not be all that serious. And the big question now is, will he be ready next week? That's what everybody in New York wants to know, and I think uh, in Philadelphia as well. Again, that's short time for preparation. It'll make a difference. Steve, how many hours does he have to get ready? <laughs> Over to kick off again, the Giants with nary a timeout at this point. And down by 10. And looking a red eye in the face going back to the East Coast is Ingram. Closer to the 17-yard line. 49ers next week at Atlanta. Then we see them in Anaheim against Everett and Flipper Anderson and Rams two weeks from tonight. A long night. Scrap your way back into a football game where it looked like you were out 17 points down. It looked like you had an opportunity to win it. And the 49ers put together the winning points. Sims. Nobody open. He gets sacked. It's a fumble. And the 49ers have it. Larry Roberts, after Kevin Fagan had created the fumble, Larry Roberts recovers, and the 49ers will run the clock out. Really doesn't matter all that much. Ten points down, under a minute to play. Still not the way Phil Simms would like to end the game, but indicative of the pressure that he's faced. Pierce Holt with a big night tonight. And those are good numbers for Phil Sims with the exception of that last.